uh, and that's by working together, and that's TD senators, councillors. We're not doing anybody any favours um, by, by not. And look, we all know, we all have neighbours, family members, friends, but even within the council, or some of the councillors, council staff, everybody uh, has has um, Micah in their homes, and there's nobody. It's like cancer. It's like cancer. It's just it's affecting the whole community, and we need to have solidarity. But we need to work. We can have difference of opinion, but we need to work together, and that's quite clearly coming out of the meeting today. And certainly, there's a lot of calls for inquiries, and I would 100% uh, uh, agree we need to have inquiry. But no inquiry should get in the way of progress, in the way of uh, trying to get these house, uh, houses uh, sorted out. Because the next thing you're going to hear is you're going to have builders and different people, quarry owners, all looking for legal representations of inquiries and this and that. And we need, first and foremost, to get the scheme amended. The, the original scheme, while it was set up uh, with good intentions, we had to accept that, uh, and we all thought it was going to be great, uh, but it was only when that scheme was implemented, when the engineers were on the ground, well, when the proof was put on the pudding to see how it would work, we've seen that there's more, there's more problems now than anybody envisaged, and the cost, the cost is not what it was envisaged, it's not a token, uh, it's not a cope token sort of payment by, by house owners uh, is just totally unaffordable and it's totally unfair as well. It has to be parity of esteem uh, with, with the, the pyrite and I think that, and I certainly, and I call on my party representatives um, here in Donegal and the Doyle of no club at all, I would call on them to support this 100% and I know they have already done so. I know all of the councillors, um, all the parties here have, and I think that's, that's very, very important. Uh, and um, I must commend again the, the MICA group, the MICA committee led by Martin, uh, all, all of the people that are out there, and even people that don't agree that this is maybe the right way or people that, that at the moment lack confidence. And, and that's to be expected. Like, you know, we, we haven't seen the end of this yet. You know, we're only at the beginning. So it's only natural enough. A lot of people will be sceptical. A lot of people are pointing the finger. And there's a lot of anger and that out there. But that should not get in the way of progress. Let's get the progress. Then then the blame game can start. Uh, one question I would have, and it's going up time again, and was alluded to by other members, but I would like uh, for that to be explained to us uh, in clear terms uh, what assurance there is or how we know that the MICA and, and other substance, pyrite, etc. in East Block, how can we be 100% sure today that that's not the case? Who's actually, who did test the blocks, as someone alluded to earlier? But who's actually testing now? Is it done on a regular basis? How do we know? Uh, and, and that's something we need to be, people that are building houses right now are trying to, trying to get mortgages. So, uh, as I say, I support everyone who's spoken so far uh, uh, regarding inquiries, amending the scheme, and I alluded as the last day of, as I watched the meeting, I was at the, the March in Dublin, I've listened to many of the meetings by these committees and others, and I must say, I would support 100% what's there. Uh, and we need to get, we need to get uh, a scheme that's fit for purpose, and we need it as soon as possible. So thank you very much. Am I going to call the one, uh, Councillor Byrne McGuinness? Chairman, thank you, and thank you for guiding over this meeting. It's your first meeting, and rightly so. Dealing with the most important issue in Donegal County. In my time, and I've been a long time in Donegal County Council, I, I welcome you and I want to welcome the public here today. Quite, a, I have no doubt that quite a number of the public will have been affected by MICA. I built an extension to my premises here, and there's MICA in that group. I don't think there are very many, any family in any shown that isn't affected by MICA in some way or another. So I welcome the public here today as well and thank you, Chairman, for arranging that. Right, first of all, 
wonder if you can accord with him. I know one party whip, Martin Harley, in his, what he stated, he made on behalf of the party. That's where the party stands, 100% redress. I want to also state clearly that I had full and have full confidence in Martin McDermott, the chairman of the members' okay. committee. I don't think it was fair or it is fair that anybody would cast any aspersions on Martin on his work. Martin has been very diligent, he has, uh, has done tremendous work with the committee, he has been available to all people at all times. And I know, uh, I know he's my neighbour here, but I know and nobody knows him better than me and knows the, the commitment that Martin has uh, to the MICA problem and, and indeed as a public representative. I want also, Chair, to acknowledge the MICA uh, committee, MICA Action Committee. It's had 10 years since I attended the first meeting, just around 10 years of the MICA Action Group. Very first meeting that was held, I was present. And I saw what has happened in the work that has been done by so many people, and, and especially that MICA Action Group. They've given of their time, have, have raised awareness, have had public meetings in the Green Inn and elsewhere, and down through the years. And they worked uh, you know, with tremendous dedication to their fellow man. They, we had, uh, through that group, and Joe McHugh delivered a redress, uh, 90% uh, redress scheme. It didn't work out that way, and Joe would be the first to tell you. The, the civil service in Dublin opposed it right, left, and centre, and the Mike Action Group knows that. But eventually, it was signed off on at 90%. Uh, We're looking for another 10%. Another 10% more. And we're having difficulty getting another 10%. Because that 90% didn't work out at all because of civil service interventions. And I want to say that our officials in the Mecca, in Donegal, our officials in the council, Patsy Lafferty and John Guller, have done tremendous work in dealing with that civil service. And they're totally frustrated with that civil service. I have brought cases to them, and I brought it up at, at meetings, Chair, as you know, on humanitarian grounds. And this was brought forward to the civil service by Patsy and John and rejected. There was a question down, but Joe McHugh put a question down in the dial yesterday in relation to it, and the minister assured him that they would be now looking into that. But it's, the civil service is opposing everything putting obstacles in our way, even to the detriment of, the, of their elected peers of all parties, find it difficult to get around them. And we have to uh, find some way and means of bringing that to an end. But as far as our committee here, Chair, is concerned, we have to remain united 100% redress, nothing less. We have to remain united without calling or questioning any of our motives of anybody. Because it's very, very unfair. And I support, and I've always supported, um, a public inquiry. But I would ask those who are on, on social media, if... And we are supporting and calling for a public inquiry. Well, then let them refrain from naming people and finding people guilty before the, a public inquiry has taken place. And they're doing nothing for their cause. They're, they're, uh, they're doing nothing for the Mike Action Group's cause. They're doing nothing for the people who are most needs cause. 
Anybody can name anybody. Anybody can pick uh, weaknesses or anything. But that's not the way forward. We have to go forward with one thing in mind, 100% make a redress, nothing else. Your 90% didn't work, and the civil servants and the government should be told that. Now you give us another 10%. Um, I, I just think that some of our officials have been named. This is very, very unfair. Why have they been named? They've been accused of negligence. They've been accused of different things without any evidence at all to support that. And I would again say to those who are using social media, uh, remember that every man and woman working for Donegal County Council have a family and some have children. Is that the way to treat your neighbour? I don't think it is. I agree with practically everything that was spoken here today, Chairman. Uh, but I want to say one thing. We have a housing crisis and we need a plan going forward for, uh, for private house, housing, house owners and for council tenants. And it's now we put that plan in place. I have talked before, months ago, about a housing, pending housing crisis in Donegal. And, you know, we have got, alongside our, our campaign for 100% redress, we have got our own house in order and provide for the people of our county who have gone through hell and earth through no fault of their own. And, you know, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that if there's a public inquiry, that will bring out who's at fault. But everybody is actually at fault, including the banks, insurances, everyone. I, I, I just can't, uh, anybody involved in giving loans or anything else to properties and then asking people to pay a mortgage on a property that's worthless, it just beggars belief. Um, so I believe every member of Donegal County Council, every member of Donegal County Council, his heart's in the right place. They want to do the right thing for, for the people they represent. They want, and, it's, uh, and I, I believe every council official is the same, because many of our council officials have Mike in their own homes. They want to get this 100% redress scheme over the line. And then you ask yourself the question, who is blocking it? So I have, I want to commend the, the march to Dublin. I wasn't able to go on it. But they've it, it, done the county absolute great credit, the manner in which they behaved themselves, the manner in which they went down there, brought their case to the, to the capital. But, and, and we had many, many uh, uh, members of the Rakhtas supporting them. But, but where is it block? The, the committee at present is going down. And they will tell you, it's, 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 uh, it's like it no teeth pieces that slow. This, this shouldn't be, the civil service shouldn't be holding things back or, or dragging their feet. It shouldn't take a question down in the dial to get a minister to commit looking after some of our families on humanitarian grounds. We're looking for money. They just want to be dealt with within the system that exists here. And they're opposing that. Well, Canning talked about uh, uh, planning. It's absolutely crazy. And we all know it's crazy. But you have to apply for planning permission to replace a house on the same footprint. If you were taking it two or three fields away, different question. These are civil servant decisions, and they don't need to change. We need to change the existing scheme to 100%. And that's all, that's what I will be, have supported and will support as long as I'm on Donegal County Council. Again, I congratulate you, Chair, on your first meeting. It's very correct 
that is about the biggest crisis and disaster that has happened to the county, and especially here in the show. And I commend you for that. And I want to again to say that I'm in full support of Martin McDermott as chairman of our committee on the, on the council. And I believe that maybe a way forward we need now, while the Mike Action Group is meeting with the minister and things, we should be also, also or meeting with the civil servant, we should be also meeting with our representatives in the county for the field as, a, as council representatives, as elected representatives of the people of Donegal, I think, Chair. Uh, and that's not interfering in any way with the Michael Group that's presently trying to negotiate something. And I find it very, very difficult. Thank you very much. Councillor Wiggins, um, and I have Councillor Liam Blaney. Thanks, Chair. Uh, first of all, Chair, I'd just like to say that I just wouldn't be fully, fully convinced that this meeting should have went ahead today. Um, we already had uh, a meeting a few weeks ago dedicated to the Meg issue. And I think the, the majority of, of councillors on Donegal County Council spoke that day, raised a huge amount of issues. And um, as well as that, we have a working group set up uh, negotiating with the department until the 31st of July, and I think that they should be let go until after that date before any other, any other meetings would be seen to be interfering. And hopefully it wouldn't be seen to be interfering with them, but... And hopefully the message will come out from this meeting here today that the reason that this meeting is held is because it's to help and support them on their fight uh, with, with the department to ensure that every homeowner in this county gets 100% redress. That shouldn't cost them one cent to take their house back to where, the, where it should be. And um, for that reason, I just... I'm, fully, I'm not fully convinced, Chair, that we should have went ahead with this meeting today until after the 31st of July. Um, and it is unfortunate as well that we have a number of, of, of groups representing representing the, the homeowners. I believe we should be all fighting this together. And uh, as I always say, it goes divide and conquer. And uh, I believe we should be all one. And I think it is unfortunate that it is divided up into a number of groups now at this stage and maybe may divide up more, hopefully not, but other groups may do as well. Uh, I'm not going to go over everything that went over the, that I went over the last day. Um, there's a lot of issues raised the last day by everybody. A lot of people aren't going over all the issues again today. But um, I just want to say that I fully support the call for, for the public inquiry as well. And um, I want a full conference in the chair of our of our redress scheme and our county kind of council of Martin McDermott. I've worked closely with Martin since since um, that money was set up. And he has put 100% of his effort into, into that, and time into that chair of that committee for the better of the people that has a problem of making the homes. And I don't think there's any other agenda other than that um, held by Martin. Um, there's a lot of allegations being made in your endos and both here today and on social media and, and on social media, unsubstantiated allegations, I have to say. And it's easy for people to go out and say populist, throw out populist phrases. And unfortunately, a lot of it sticks. And I would ask anybody that has got any information that they would take it forward to the proper the proper places, either to the Gardaí or I'd be very interested to hear any of it myself. Anybody has any proof of the allegations that are being made? Unfortunately, in my mind, there's no, no proof shown yet. Um, it's all hearsay. A lot of it's hearsay anyway. And uh, I'd be very, very interested in seeing any of the proof that people are supposed to have to any of these allegations that, that has been thrown out there. Um, 
I'd like to say as well that I've had a full confidence on the council staff as a minister in the scheme. That can't be that can't be that easy for them either. Things that's been said about them. But I do believe that the engineers is going to have to take a bigger bit of responsibility than to what some what some of them are taking. They're given information back to homeowners that says not maybe hundred percent through. Um, for, for each of the options that they propose for any individual, any, any individual home, they know the criteria that they're supposed to meet for to be able to recommend that option. And it's not the fault of the staff of Donegal County Council that they don't send in all the, all the criteria that's required of them. And as well as that, I would like to hear the information from any engineers out there who are saying that they are sending in all the proper criteria, but they're still not getting um, getting their, their applicants um, application to be processed. And uh, as well, I would like to say that a number of weeks ago, we had um, the make a redress committee of Donegal County Council. We, we had a number of meetings there this last number of weeks. And I would say it is our job to ensure that the scheme is, is administered properly as councillors. And in my opinion, on the first meeting we had, it was uh, taking about 10 to 12 weeks to process an application. And there were reasons, valid reasons given for that at the time. But within a couple of weeks, that was reduced to three to four weeks. And I think we have to do the work done by, by the staff again and ensuring that happened. And I do hope that continues to happen. And we will keep an eye on it to make sure, as far as we're concerned, that the council uh, keeps up their end of the bargain. And it's only fair to the homeowners that they would keep up their end of the bargain. Um, as far as the, the council's old county, council house is concerned, I don't believe that we're, we are we are giving enough information back to the to the uh, tenants of our houses. There's huge problems with tenants um, seeing their house deteriorating. We know where there's different places has been uh, suggested that they would hold back the rent because of the, of the, the condition the houses get into. And I think it's too slow, and it's possibly not done at all, council's fault. But I think it's too slow the pace that any work is, is ongoing or happening with these houses. It is far, far too slow, and I think it has to be uh, speed up very, very quickly because it will be a long, long time getting through them at the rate things go at the minute. And I think that's one of the things that, that the council is going to have to uh, take on board and try and improve the, the rate at which uh, any work. Uh, is going on as far as the county council, county or the, the council house is concerned. And lastly, chair, I'd just like to say, that's a question I would have um, of the executive as far as the legal advice is concerned that we got a number of weeks ago, and asked that we get a second opinion on it. I never let a word back since about it. And I'm just wondering if somebody give me some kind of update on it here today. Thanks, chair. Okay, uh, thank you, Liam. Uh, just an to. Uh, Customer Hill, Colin Gillespie, for his send me his apologies. He had to, he had to leave early. Um, Customer Kim Brogan has indicated too, so I'm going to take him after Councillor Michael McBride. So the next speaker I have on my list is Corridor Terry Crossan. I want to thank the chair for calling this meeting and I want to commend them on the manner in which he has conducted this meeting. I fully support the positive input from all of our members. We need full council unity on this very serious issue. I support the Michael Group, who are now in negotiation with the government. I support the Michael families. I support 100% redress, and I support the call for a public inquiry. As a member of the Michael Subcommittee, 
I did not have sight of the letter alluded to by Councillor McCarty. I accept fully Councillor McDermott's explanation, and I know that Councillor McDermott is a person of integrity who has worked extremely hard for the Mike of families. Uh, I would call for himself and Councillor Albert Doherty to be included in the working group and to be a part of the ongoing negotiations. I would also call for uh, a representative from social housing to also be included in that group. Uh, I would like to uh, commend the, the council of officials who are who have an extremely hard job here in, in, in the rollout. There have been many problems and they have uh, endeavoured to do the best they can. There are undoubtedly questions that have to be asked and questions that have to be answered and I would welcome that. So, the session Jerry Lumsa, Kurmayag Akihirli Agus Nilnyark Kurlakilia, Amor. Ramayag Tarang, next up of Councillor John A. Mitchell Farai. Kurmayag Akihirli, Kalayan Bula Kunishag Tarlinu, Agus. In Kowajastra Tain, Mark Hyperla, Gihanusha, Agus, and Colin McBurkey, dear in Kanusha. I was quite enjoyed to have a popular tension on you, Gihanusha, Kingren, Fragrate, and Popular, where to the Gisha Clinimer Hordel, Gihanusha, and you, calling the Quinton Kids from Gate, Redress, Koyu, a Shaw, a Giriatus, Dianta, Koyu, a Kinu Dianta, Misha Dianta, and Tayu Namisa. I guess fast major accord to come to you in the mail. Get in the plan and mean with a little couple of call there and show you. I bugged and tossing there with her looking at the he show. Lawyer Brona that Charlie will make a hack of us a good deal. Look at Gatalu. Can't you show a call? Can't you? Nadini show a good one. And there was a new show you know. Sean and Kish nearly get a quick way you at a fob motel and show you get a new show. Good day at a Gula Harlow Chen. I guess Kaiman didn't know more and the public is called the company with the Nal. The Fergusian or the Fergusian plan at the Ma Ron to get a guest. I guess Majin is a Martin Harley in East Lewin. She is Kaiman Kurlish. Majin and the Kolarty at Kurna were show her foil. The guy she had in price a year or so faster. The color the era has at the school of humanish. No, I do era has or at the hand that the eating to behold a show of clue the foie. My anchor in the bankly got a real this. She's got a guy billion than the bankly show la fan art and show. Had Jack Rats Fiant a Gulliki Cho, you look as Hanshin Roar, Corley Conday with the Nal, Shig, a real discussion of Jenny Yeda or Pitin Tabla, Agusto Daru, Ari Gadil, Lighter Stas, Stans, Kate from Gage or Faster. Couple of the little bum, Majorla and Ever to Majerus and Amalahi, Majorla Corley Conday with the Nal, Kate had Jenny Screw to her show. Bei Charlie de Nation de hokus wan realtist na kordi kondi wun de ngal tam edig stelig togal tei wal meika ans na wal tam edig wusel gefolch na kesh ni pailom selma wot keta de nun skru du agus wal 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 shoha kui tuerisch major la tei ta kordi kondi wun de ngal o hokal is da tei hier agus ni wun is da tei hier tan halu publi agus skalta agus anu de le ag tam edig ag togal sa kondi. I saw a bundle in a show in the state of Canada. I cheered to him, go to Gully, what, what, and he said, Gustan, quick counter party, so I saw a girl and a couple of people in the middle, more Gull, Mike, Gull, and Dunangal, and it's been Honda, I think, for you, Shaw, and Will, and Myla, and I hear it. So, I saw a question by Lums, hi, ar a hórlian seo nhw hwnnw fainni agos yr eich gwa gwa la pobl i ffanach la cynnia maedwyl y sy'n cedd fwn gedd rydres 
and his kind full to live with the gold fistle and public tarlu more you much is could be born because Boris Gill could do Harlem show uh when the blunt in the West uh a Harlem show and Stasha Tower to go go to the station can well faster uh I day what you do faster the government the color there as the bank in the I guess uh real to spru I guess a color we could file and I was sure Get to a fragrant show faster. I guess can make love with Irish down the bulky. Good morning, good morning. Through 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 the chair. Um, there's no interpreter, Mayor. The I, I don't understand one word because there's non, no interpretation whatsoever has been given to us. The <laughs> same <laughs> the same council <laughs> meal column, and I'm not criticising the members for that. Uh, they're entirely speaking Irish, but there should have been a translator translating exactly what was said. They're in the, in the chat bar at the bottom. Frank no, it's not, it's not coming up. It's not coming up. It's coming up as Michael McClafferty. Yes. Well, why is it coming up as Michael McClafferty? It's not, no. Well, on, on my screen it is. Welcome public yes. inquiry from Michael McClafferty to everyone. And pardon this, this Jack, just soon Jack, happens. Jack Tesha, Chathanese. Frank, hold on. Jack Tesha, Chathanese, more Anim, more Dutch, Frank and Chant. And the uh, 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 Jack, my mission apology comes from the staff Austin, the uh, to my rash. It's Russian McLaughlin translating. Was that what it is? Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't, I didn't realise that. But what he called, I mean, we should be told that this has been translated in writing. Right. Well, just for everybody's information, like Russian McLaughlin is translating. You can get the, the chat bar. It's coming up. The the translations there. Okay. Uh, with that, I'll move on to uh, Councillor Donald Coyle. Councillor Coyle? Good morning, good uh, Fairly, can you hear me there? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, first of all, I welcome uh, the opportunity that you have given us uh, today. Um, to further discuss uh, the 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 mega crisis, uh, a lot of the comments uh, we would have uh, had in the last uh, uh, meeting, um, we were given the opportunity by by um, Rena Dunne and the chair um, to uh, speak about the the mega crisis. Uh, and uh, what can be done about it, and what should be done, and I suppose at the end of the day. You know, we can talk as much as we like. You know, it's it's. There are a lot of people today, uh, maybe watching on, uh, wondering what uh, answers will they be given today? What's going to happen now? Uh, where is it going? When will I be able to uh, rebuild my house? How? When? Uh, and have my house is demolished and has to be rebuilt. Where am I going to live? Uh, what's going to be put in place for that? And all of those, uh, there are many, many uh, unanswered questions that have to be dealt with. Uh, and we have to, you know, as opposed from our point of view and from the point of view of the officials of Donegal County Council, it's, it's uh, a time for clear thinking and, and uh uh, clear heads uh, to see where, what we can actually do in a, 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 in, in a practical situation for the many people who are at the minute wondering where they stand in relation to this. And I suppose the first thing uh, that has to be done is that a scheme has to be devised that people will not be out of pocket uh, to get their houses either uh, repaired or restored or, or rebuilt. Um, and I suppose that's the number one priority for all families and all people affected by it. Uh, and I think that that's a, a job of work that's ongoing at the minute. Hopefully by the 31st of July, answers will be given. And of course, look, we all decided at the last meeting uh, that we were all in favour of a hundred percent redress and nothing less than that. That still stands, uh, and I hope that that will be achievable and that that will be the outcome of the present uh, uh, working group deliberations. Uh, there are a number of exceptional circumstances 
uh, where people find themselves in, and especially people who bought houses at the end of last year and whether they will be qualified for the scheme or not. And I think that that is something that the officials uh, from the council who are on the working group need to bring uh, to the table uh, in their discussions and the working group because there are some people who bought houses in good faith. Uh, the um, houses were so well conceded that they didn't realise that there was any mica in them. Now they have discovered that they're living in houses in a house that has mica and I think they have to be accommodated. There's going to be no short-term solution to this. There's going to be a huge problem uh, finding housing. We have to have a look at all the vacant houses that are in the that are in the county. We need to be looking at where families are going to be housed while work has been carried out on these houses. Um, we have to look at maybe you know caravan parks, holiday homes, any place where there are uh, vacant houses. All of these things will need to have to have to be taken into consideration. Uh, people should not be out of pocket. That's the number one thing. And we should not confuse uh, what has to be done for the people now and what will be done uh, and, and, and going forward in relation to a public inquiry. We can't, we can't confuse the two of those things because at the present minute, the majority of people who's, uh, who are in a very stressful situation because of the situation with their houses, but they want, they want the job of work that has to be done to either restore or rebuild their houses done as quickly as possible. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who haven't even registered yet with the council. They're waiting to see if this 100% uh, redress scheme is coming on board. There are quite a number of people who don't want to even think that they have MICA, even though they may have cracks in their houses, but they just don't want maybe... They're, they're not able, and that's a novel situation, they're not able to face the reality that their houses have MICA. That's an awful scandal. We've talked, uh, and many of the members have talked about that. But look, the one thing that I will say, and that's been mentioned before, and, uh, and, and that is uh, that we all stay united because in unity is strength. There's no point in vilifying anybody in relation to it at this stage because that will not fix one house. That will not make uh, the situation for anybody in a mica house any better. Naming people, there's no point in it or making a new endos. But what we need is that we all work together, support each other to support the people that are suffering there. And I hope, you know, like we need to be looking at practical we need to be looking. Sorry, we need to be looking at practical solutions and what we can do. And I think there has been a good start now made by the officials and the, and, and the council. It's it's a no easy job. It's something that will be worth it for the next twenty years at least, and it's going to cost the country a lot of money. But even though that may be so, look, every single person and every single family are entitled to feel safe and secure in their own homes. And and, and that has to be the whole point of, of, of the exercise uh, and, 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 and this, and this uh, make a redress scheme. And as I say, the council officials so far have done a very good job. It may have been slow at the start. I think myself uh, that they have learned a lot. They have been given a huge, huge task of work to do, um, but I think they're getting there, and and I think going forward, and there will be a lot more houses coming on stream. And in relation to uh, the uh, council tenants, I think myself that there need to be more, maybe another uh, group set up within the council maybe to deal specifically with council tenants and their homes and, and uh, going forward because look uh, the job of work that is in front of everybody here in front of uh, all those suffering from MICA there's a huge job of work to be done it's going to take a lot of time and 
people people uh, need and deserve to get the 100 percent redress and they, we we also need to have a uh, public inquiry but i wouldn't want to see one thing getting mixed up with the other we have to deal with the present crisis because that is what is affecting the people mostly now for a medium i get clearly um, the speakers I've left now have Noel Jordan in earlier it said it let Rena Dunne in after Noel then Michael McBride Jerry Crawford uh, Michael McMahon and I said it would be Kieran Brogan then Michael Colin and then Frank I'll let you in briefly again at the end because I know you, you had a good bit of time as a sergeant which is briefly if there's anything that you want to comment there but that, that's the speakers now as I, as I have it folks so uh, Councillor Jordan uh, Thanks Chair and uh, again I would just like other speakers I would like to commend you for accommodating this meeting today and I think you know there's um, from a couple of previous speakers talking about the previous meeting uh, this meeting is different because uh, the public are invited onto this forum today and uh, the public that are affected by this crisis and uh, the, there's members here from the, the Make Action Group as well and um, it shows that there is uh, as elected members throughout the county uh, that they are unanimously agree that there should be a hundred percent redress scheme for these people and uh, and the crisis that they're in, and also uh, to call for a, a public inquiry. There's a public inquiry. What to me, in my eyes, won't affect what is already in place, or is what or what has already been negotiated for, because um, the people needs to know the truth. They need to know the truth of uh, behind a lot of the questions has been asked today. Um, there's a, a huge number of. Um, um, speakers that um, have brought up points that I would uh, like to raise. Uh, I think there's one uh, uh, one very important one, uh, which, as, uh, as you know, that I'm an elected rep from South of the county, and um, as for now, we're not aware of any uh, um, uh, houses that's affected by Mike in South of the county. But in the last number of weeks, I've been contacted by a number of householders that are car- that are getting. Uh, engineers' reports done on their houses that they fear that they may have made it. So the scope is wide, uh, and for these people, for these people, the whole, uh, the suppose the whole um, um, uh, part of the investigative part of uh, make it here, uh, they don't know where to go to. They're they're asking questions. Uh, it's new to them. It's new to them. Uh, and um, suppose, and I would be asking. That there is a liaison officer set up by the Donegal County Council to deal with all these queries uh, from uh, from these concerned householders uh, affected by this crisis, and for private householders uh, and council tenants that are in uh, in um, uh, properties that are affected by the crisis, and the people that, uh, and people who receive homes business payments. Um, uh, that uh, they're in a, they're in a huge difficulty too, uh, trying to deal with their uh, with landlords. Uh, as a, the landlords are locked out of this scheme by the looks of things, um, and um, there's a huge amount of questions to be asked. Um, I, I would just like to ask um, um, how many houses in our council stock uh, that we're aware that are affected by Mega? How many have, have been applied for for this scheme? And uh, and I also. I uh, would like to uh, um, commend um, uh, Councillor Gary Doherty for uh, uh, for uh, adding uh, the uh, will add the, the disposal of the uh, effective materials uh, to the agenda of the Environment SPC because that's going to be a huge difficulty down the road too. Um, there's questions to be asked, uh, uh, you know, if it has to be disposed of uh, and can't be used again, and maybe if it can be used again. Uh, for other purposes, uh, for other purposes, maybe uh, walkways, trailways. We don't know. We don't know any of these. Questions. None of these questions have been answered. Uh, so there's a lot of questions out there, and uh, um, I would also um, like to um, uh, commend um, uh, Councillor McDermott and Councillor Albert Arden for their works uh, so far on the uh, the Mega Committee. And now um, I would be asking. Uh, for um, uh, Councillor McDermott and Councillor Doherty to be included uh, on the working group that are negotiating with the department uh, because I feel 
as a, a councillor that was elected in 2014, um, I, I wasn't aware of Mike at all. And um, uh, there, the councillor, Albert Doherty, had raised, he must have had about eight motions in my time in council uh, on Mike. So I, I wasn't aware of it until I, until I was elected in 2014. So this is going to be a huge, it's going to be, it's, 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 it has been the biggest crisis ever the county has faced, and um, and I, I will take a, a amount of time to to suppose to address it. Uh, but it's clear that there's only one way of addressing that uh, as as a hundred percent we address scheme, and um, uh, I think there's been a lot of huge attacks on the council, and it, it's been. I think the department's been left off the hook here. Uh, quite clearly, there's mixed messages coming back, and um, um, uh, that's concerning for people. Uh, that's that's uh, and it's uh, you know I, I would feel that we're getting away from probably I suppose the the nuts and bolts of this, um, but clearly from today's meeting, I think it's very very important that everybody's involved in this today and. Um, Again, just to voice my support uh, to uh, for a hundred percent redress scheme. Thanks, Chair. Am I able, Councillor Jordan? I said earlier at this point I would let uh, Councillor Rena Dunn hang in. So we know you there. Yeah, go on my hand, Dr. Hurley. Um, as you know, back at the, the plenary meeting on the twenty second of May, because of the seriousness of the Mecca issue, as Chair, I put on hold. 64 items on the agenda to allow a full day's discussion on Micah and Donegal. And I was delighted to leave the meeting that day, knowing that all of the members who attended the meeting were four square united behind the homeowners affected by Micah to ensure we accept and seek nothing less than 100% redress. And all all of the issues that were engaged in uh, for the past year, COVID and others, the, ser the most serious is the one blighting the lives of thousands of families here in the county. Uh, my own town, Bonkrana, has 75% of any shown's mica. That's social and private. So it's an issue that's causing untold stress for families so nothing less than 100 scheme will give families the justice that they deserve. And it's important that we iterate that message here today. And I said last week at the meeting last week that the mega epidemic must consume all of our political energies over the next months ahead. We have 25,000 vacant houses in Donegal. I don't know if people are aware of this or not, but I would like to see a scheme that would allow these houses be brought to a livable state where they could be used by people that have to come out of their mica homes until their own home would be fixed or rebuilt. And I know this is a national issue, but it's something that, that we seriously need to look at. And a central recycling area for the county where all of the material from the mica homes could be recycled, recycled safely. Uh, so I think that's something that would be very important as well for the county. Um, it's very disappointing to see insurance companies and banks walk away into the sunset while the taxpayer is expected to sponge up the entire 100%, and I would like to see both pursued. Um, I would like to thank Councillor Martin McDermott, like other councillors have, and Councillor Albert Doherty for their work, uh, for Martin's work as chair and Albert on, on, on the committee. Uh, two very honourable people. And I want to thank the, the staff and the planning and the mega section of Donegal County Council, whose workload has multiplied by at least tenfold. And it makes it so much more difficult to administer a scheme 
that is not your own scheme. And I know this is a scheme that was given to them to administer. And as I say, it does make it more difficult. And I wish to make a redress committee every success also uh, in the work that they have done and, and, and where they continue to in the future. Their job is a very, very difficult one. Can I close this door because there's a noise coming in? Sorry about that. Um, and I just want to agree with uh, Councillor Bernard McGuinness and, and Councillor Blaney that there is a number of very serious allegations being made about a number of people. And surely putting this up on social media is not a responsible way to deal with what people think are serious issues. If people have legitimate genuine, serious issues to raise. Surely the Garda station is a place to raise them in where they can be investigated properly. Or maybe the Guardian should be visiting these people, making the allegations to follow up on them. Goro my hug of Faka here Uh, Michael McBride. You there, Michael? Uh, yes. Um, thank you, Chairman. As most firstly, I would like to apologise. I was a bit late joining the meeting. I was difficulty connecting, and I'm not sure why that was. But um, anyway, first of all, I would just like to thank uh, Councillor Frank McBeauty for calling for this meeting. And I would like to thank Councillor uh, yourself, Chairman uh, Jack Murray, for facilitating the meeting. And I would like to welcome all the members of the public um, that's online today. Um, I think it's important that uh, you see um, that Donegal County Councillors are supporting your campaign. And I fully support the uh, call for a public inquiry and to the Mikey scandal. I think it's most important that it happens. Um, I support the 100% redress uh, Mikey campaign for the people of Donegal, and that's for 100% on all properties that are affected uh, by Mikey. And that is uh, what I had down in my motion for the last plenary meeting. And um, I think that's most important that it covers all properties that are affected by it. Um, I suppose before I go any further, I would just like to thank uh, Paddy Dever and everyone who helped him to organise the marches in Dublin and in Bunkrana. And uh, also to thank Ian Margie for his efforts in Letterkenny and everyone who helped him to organise uh, the march in Letterkenny. And I suppose we have to thank all the people that give up their time for to go uh, and support those marches. And um, we also have to thank them for the dignified manner in which they, 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 um, they, and, and how they carried themselves at all those marches that left you proud to be from Donegal. And um, I was proud to stand with those people off Donegal and Letter Kenny at the march um, that ran from the community centre to the public service centre and at the march in Dublin. I think, you know, the crowd was fantastic. And if that doesn't get the message through to government, I'm not quite sure what would get it through. And um, just also like to thank all the people who sponsored buses to go to Dublin, um, all the business people. And indeed, I was glad to be able to help out myself in sponsoring the bus because I think it's important that we show support to all the people who are really struggling. And... Um, this is probably the most important meeting that I have been involved in um, at Donegal County Council since I've become a councillor myself. And um, we're quite clear at this point in time that the original scheme just doesn't work, hasn't worked and won't work. And we need a new 100% scheme that works for the people. And that has to include second houses. Um, because those second houses 
are home to somebody. And if you look at Letterkenny, and I'm sure Buncrana and every other town is the same, if you try to look for a house to rent on them at the moment, on any given day, if you go on daft.ie or some of the forums, you'll be lucky if there are five houses to rent. And the problem that people are having is if second houses, second homes are not included, then eventually these houses will be closed up and there are going to be no accommodation for people to live in. So that's something that we have to keep in mind as we move forward. Um, we also have to look at all the other buildings, community centres, all the schools that we have in Donegal, and health centres, and any other public building that's out there. We all need to look and see and make sure that those are included on the scheme because these are places that people use on a daily basis and there's no point in waiting until the mega starts to show to a point where the building has to be closed. They all need to be tested and identified whether they have it or don't have it and the plans put in place that the, can, that the problem can be remedied whether it's a rebuild or what it may be because Places like community centres such as Rye um, and these types of places, they're the hub of their community. There are children in there every day. And we can't wait. These communities can't afford for these types of centres not to be operating. Families depend on them. They've worked hard to put them there and they must be supported. Um, I know many people who have made a my own family circle, friends of mine and constituents that have called me um, looking for advice on what they should do. And we really have to look at it, all the problems that, that, are, that are coming down the track. And one of the big problems that we're going to have whenever we get into the nuts and bolts of sorting out houses with MICA is going to be alternative accommodation. And I have a motion on for our municipal meeting next week, asking for Donegal County Council to talk to the Minister for Housing and ask him to consider putting sites with log cabins on them that people can live in when their own houses have been repaired. And there are sites that come to mind in Letterkenny, places like the old Unify site, the old Oatfield site, the Bacon Factory site. I would think as well an area like Milford and in other municipal areas as well, particularly the Zorley area and the Anishon area, we should be looking at sites where we can put log cabins so we know that we can provide accommodation for people when they're out of their own houses. And I think it's a, it's a motion that should be investigated. I think some of the sites that I've spoken about already have the services. They've got water. They've got electricity and they've got sewerage. And I think they could be quite easily yeah. made up and take temporary accommodations yeah. for people that they could live in for a year when they're out of their own house. And the area of Donegal where their children are going to school and where they play their sports and all this type of stuff, because we can't drag them away to other parts of the county. It simply won't work. So that's something that I think that we should be looking at. It's for all, uh, the spiral and costs of rent as another thing. And um, I know in the town in Letterkenny, three bedroom semi-detached houses at the moment are making up to 900 euros per month. 900 euros per month. Now, who can afford it on top of trying to pay a mortgage? It's simply not affordable. So we have to take a hard look at how we're going to accommodate people when they're not, uh, when they're moving out of their own houses. And you know, if we look back at this, and it's all right saying not to play the blame game, but we met with Damien English in 2016 down in the Cairndonna, in June 2016, in the Cairndonna Public Service Centre. And, you know, when I left that meeting, my own feeling was that by the end of that year, that there would have been some type of a redress scheme put in place. And here we are five years on, and we're still trying to, to get a redress scheme that works. And what 
has happened in the meantime. The cost of repairing and the cost of building has absolutely doubled. So the government has brought a lot of this burden on the taxpayers by sitting on their hands and not dealing with the issue that they knew was there. And we have to remember that. That's a fact. Um, Another thing that I would just like to maybe to speak about briefly as well, there seems to be great frustration among people who have uh, employed engineers uh, and paid them for to put in uh, reports um, about their houses, people who have paid out six to seven thousand euros, and they're constantly getting phone calls. I know one lady who has got four phone calls from um, the Donegal County Council, or four communications from the council, looking for for um, for their information. And these people are so frustrated that they're paying people so much money to try and get their house. Um, fixed again and to get it into a state where they can live safely with their children and they're continuously looking for FA. I think whatever information is missing, it should all come out together if there's any. And I also think that if the engineers that are that are preparing the reports were all taken in and put them through a workshop, then it would alleviate the problem. Teach them how to complete the forms properly before they're sent into the council because it is very frustrating for the people that has to deal with it and it's going on it's going on every day people think it's a stalling tactic now you can look at it any way you want but the people that have paid out that money are so frustrated some of them are just crying when they get the phone call some of them don't know how to handle it and um, I think we need to make sure that that stops happening and I would ask that the council would have a look at that and try and figure out a better way to handle these things going forward. At all FAAs, if the required would be asked for at one time, not one and then drip fed another one and another one. I think it's very important for the people um, that are out there that 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 happens. Another thing that um, I would just like to speak briefly about and it's probably the most important of all, is the mental health of people who are living in houses with mica. And I think that the, the um, I've got a motion on for a plenary meeting next week asking for Donegal County Council uh, through the office of the mayor, or the chairman, sorry, to have a meeting, look for a meeting with the HSE and we need to make sure that the services are in place to support the families with MICA and that there are adequate resources put in place to deal with the people who are struggling to cope with the blight of MICA on their daily lives. I think that is very, very important. And I'll speak more about it on Tuesday. Um, we have plenty of other issues. But something that I would also just like to maybe touch on today when we're here. I deal with people in construction every day doing my own work. And I've spoken to people who have already been involved in repairing houses outside leaves only, not full rebuilds, outside leaves. And I've been reliably informed that it takes a team of four men almost three months to take down an outer leaf and to repair a house. So if we look at what we've got in Donegal, we've got we're we're thinking or estimating that we've about five thousand houses. Excuse me. Uh, we're we're estimating that we have about five thousand houses with mica. Now, if they were only, <coughs> only if these were only to repair the outside leaf, we would need five hundred people in the construction industry for ten years to repair them. We know there's a lot of houses that are going to be rebuilt, are going to have to be rebuilt. So we simply don't have the labour in Donegal for to do the work. Everybody will tell you at the moment that's involved in the construction industry, we can't get the help. We could use more people. This is before the micro work even starts. So I'm thinking there's a lot of people who have emigrated from this country after the demise of the Celtic Tiger. 
when I went to Canada, to the UK, to Australia, and other shores. And we should probably be looking at putting, you know, a, a call out to these people, asking them if they would consider to come home, because a lot of them, when they're away seven or eight or ten years, probably are thinking about coming home anyway. A lot of them might have children. They'd rather put them into schools and raise them here in Ireland. And uh, that might be a good time for us to sit and look at that. And I would maybe ask that our own maker committee um, would, would put that on their agenda and have a look at it. I think it would be a very constructive move for us to make one forward. And um, I suppose another thing that maybe I think might be helpful is I know we have our own maker committee um, and the council. And um, I suppose everybody's doing their best to try and help the people that are out there in Donegal. But what I'm going to say is sometimes I feel a wee bit removed from, from that committee because I'm not a member. We're not all members of it. And I think it would be a good idea that when the minutes of that those meetings are uh, passed, that they would all be circulated to, to the rest of the members by email. Because I think it's very important that there's no misinformation that everybody knows what's happening, what's been discussed, what's on the table, and what um, maybe the plans are going forward. So, look, there's a lot of good points brought up by a lot of members here today, and I think we have a big, big challenge in our hands going forward. I'm not getting the vibes that I would like to get from government. I'm sceptical, frankly, sceptical about the 100%, although that's what I'm calling for, is a 100% redress scheme. And I think no matter what happens, as Donegal County Councillors, we must stand with the people of Donegal and make sure that we get a 100% redress scheme for them because nothing else will work. That's what we need, the 100% redress scheme. So I'll leave it at that uh, today, uh, Mr Chairman, and I just thank you for giving me the time to speak. Thank you. No problem, Michael. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Councillor Jerry Crawford. Chair, first of all, thank you for the meeting and also the opportunity afforded by Irene at our last meeting. Uh, it's indeed fitting that we have the opportunity for to discuss this. But very many of us are affected and know people who are affected by this. And it's, it's important that we will share our concerns and to hear the concerns of others. Um, just uh, at the... I want, to, I want to acknowledge the work that's done by the council staff. Uh, it's been monitored, I know, by the MICA committee within the council. And uh, um, if there's any progress to be made there, I'm sure they'll be making representations for that. I also feel that it's a serious oversight not to have included members of the council MICA committee on the redress group. And that includes Councillor Doherty and Councillor Martin McDermott, that I know have worked tirelessly and have advised, and I have sought advice from them uh, on this matter. The, the area of East Donegal is heavily affected. And at the last meeting, last our own last area meeting, I asked a question about how many, how many houses and this, the Liffordston earlier MD was affected, and the answer wasn't informative. Indeed, it was everything. But but this is a different day. And I have I have another question on, uh, for, for next meeting next week is how the council proposed to conclusively determine the number of council-owned houses countywide that are affected by MICA. And I think it's important that the public and the tenants and the general public be aware of the how that is going to be determined and when it's likely to be determined. And I also had requested, and I repeat that request, that the council uh, tenants be informed uh, of the council's plans and what the council intends to do in that regard. Uh, I support it the last day. I have good reason to support it. Uh, my neighbours, my friends, and many people I know in this particular area here have MICA. Uh, we have, we do need... 100% uh, redress, and I fully support the, the people that are in Dublin negotiating that, and, and uh, uh, hopefully, and seriously, hope that they come away now with the result that is really needed, it's essential, 
that the people who, who, who are left in this predicament, to me there's classes of, of, of people who maybe sometimes the, the older people, the older people who find themselves in this position, who, who have talk, people are talking about 10, 12, 15 years to, to address the situation, well, you know, the hands of time are promised to nobody. But it becomes even more difficult when the hands of time are moving on at a particular age and like, you don't want to be burdened by the problems of mega redress. You would like to see that sorted. The other thing that I would ask is that during the course of the summer recess, the new chairman, as chairman of this council, whatever way it can be done, whether it's through the clerk of the DAO or the Kincolia of the DAO, at your request that all our Actus members from the whole count from the whole country visit this county and see for themselves not just the press releases and the news reports, but see for themselves the serious problem and the hardship that's been imposed on very many families in this county. I think it would be a worthwhile visit for them over the course of the summer. If that if, if that invitation were extended then it's up to themselves. Finally, the other issues that I would have is that was brought. I think we do need an explanation as to what role the council or whoever has on the licensing of the parish in the past and going forward. And how do we come to, to a stage where we know that the houses that are being built from a, in a particular areas now are being built with blocks that are not affected? And when was it likely that affected blocks were stopped being used for the construction of homes? There's very many families yet who are in the early stages of occupying houses who may not even be aware or see any signs of mega, but who, who are becoming increasingly concerned that that may be their fate. So I just, again, I have no, no problem whatsoever and an inquiry to establish the facts that's something that we all need to know at some stage. This is a major issue, and it has to be. But the priority now, I think, should be that the 100% redress scheme is approved and that people who are affected here at least know that there's a way forward to end in the predicament that through no fault of their own to find themselves on. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, sir. Which is Crawford. Uh, and I now have the concern Michael McMahon. Thank you very much, Chair, and thanks very much for holding this meeting today. Uh, and I want to welcome the people of Steve Lane who are looking at this today and listening to it. It's been a very, very worthwhile meeting because I've learned a terrible lot about the making, not to say that I didn't know a little bit about it, through uh, my colleague Albert Ardy, because I, I can say without fear, when we come to the Council and after our group meetings, Albert Ardy had it on every agenda about the making, to be so... Albert, thank you for that. I would have to say that uh, there's certainly a lot of work to be done there. There's no question about that. And we need to work, to the, work together in this. Uh, innuendo and different accusations will not ratify this very, very serious situation as regards the people of North East Donegal. And, you know, um, I often wonder how we got this far, how nobody had seen this coming or what went wrong or how it went wrong. So I am in full support of a public inquiry. There is no question about that. I'm in full support of 100%, like our party members are in 100% uh, in favour of that. But we need we need to work together. And as I think it was Gary Doherty said, we need to work closely with our other colleagues in different councils in Sligo, Mayo, uh, Limerick and Leitrim, if the make goes there, and work as one unit there because that's very, very important. I would have to say, you know, that we don't need to uh, keep bashing at the executive of Donegal County Council because, as somebody, some councillors rightly said there, you know, they live in the area and they work in the area and they have a family going to school. And, uh, you know, we're all on him sheet. And, you know, I don't think that's that's the way to go forward. Uh, uh, when we go to the doll or we talk to our public representatives or active members, we need to be talking as one unit. And, you know, the people that need to come up and uh, stand up and be counted here is the housing section. 
And I think they have failed the people in Donegal. In fact, I think they are failing the people all over the island of Ireland uh, as regards their housing programme. And um, I think, you know, that we want to, uh, I heard a conscience saying there, I think it was Megan McBride, we want to be very careful about our diaspora and immigrants there asking them to come home to help out with the work because we have a terrible shortage of houses in Donegal and I don't think, you know, where they should be at home and would like to come home and want to come home, we, we can provide houses for the people that already are living here and we're going to get it very, very hard to house the people that are in them houses. So uh, I would be careful about that. I think, you know, uh, social media, and I'm not a, an expert on that by any means, and stuff goes up uh, on social media, you know, when we talk about uh, additional inquiries and we talk about all sorts of inquiries. The only one inquiry that we need is a public inquiry to see how this happened. And I think that should be forthcoming. And I think uh, somebody mentioned there about the department, the civil service in the Department of Housing. I think, you know, for our next meeting, and I don't know many meetings you're going to have, Jack, uh, you're going to have a very, very busy summer and probably a busy, very busy year, but you'll be fit to handle it. There's no question about that. Civil servants should be made accountable to this because, you know, they, 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 they have been getting off the hook. I think we need a civil servant, the top civil servant or the minister to come back to Donegal here again and, and, and to meet the council here and to meet all the committees again and find out exactly how this happened, uh, why did it happen. But what we want immediately is a remedy. A remedy. We want to get this fixed. Because, uh, as councillors has rightly said, people uh, are suffering in their homes, not knowing when they go out for an evening or go out for a night or what, that their house will be still standing when they come back. And it has a serious medical and mental health situation on them, you know. I have to say, too, you know, that I don't think in all, with all respect, Martin McDermott covered up anything. I, I would I would disagree totally with that. And Albert Doherty, I think, done a, a fantastic job there. So let's not let's not get into, into stone throwing and accusations and stuff like that. Let us stick with the one the one thing in mind. And the one thing is mind to look after the people that are suffering, that are suffering w w with the housing crisis in regards to Michael, Michael, and as also that we stick tight by them, we support them 100 percent. I would support them 100 percent here in, in the top in the tip of Donegal. And, and the only thing that we need to do is the action to go forward and, and, and the work as one unit. Otherwise, uh, no, we, we, could lose, we could lose the, we could lose the battle. Um, Chair, uh, thank you for that, and you, you've handled yourself very well there on your first day. And thank you all very much. Uh, now I have just two other people that have been uh, Councillor Keir Brogan and then we have Colin McGill last week and I'll let Frank in briefly just at the end. So I see Tom Conaghan there. I'll put you down too, Tom. Thank you for here, Nock. And I want to acknowledge and thank you for, for this opportunity today. Um, for with a lot of what has been said, uh, a lot of very valuable contributions have been made by many here. Um, I have to say for my part that this is the single biggest crisis that I think we've ever witnessed uh, as a people here in Donegal. Um, it's causing an awful lot of stress and anxiety on many, many people. And that's very, very evident um, by the people that I'm meeting on a daily basis. We all have family and friends uh, who are affected by making. Um, it's affecting everyone. Uh, and it's something we need to work together to try and get a resolution to. Because it's an Irish thing that people have huge pride in their home. Some people work very, very hard all the days of their life, and it's all about trying to provide a home um, for themselves and indeed their family and their children. This is having a huge effect on many, many people. Um, I was glad to stand with my colleagues in Dublin um, that day with the people from Donegal. And I'll concur fully what has been said uh, about Donegal. Um, people standing united and have dignified that day in Dublin in the way they did uh, as a people. And I think we're very strong as a people here in Donegal. And we've always um, had that sort of resilience. But I have to say this is one that's definitely testing an awful lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I'll concur fully what was said earlier about the effects that it's having on mental health and on health services as well. It's a known fact that stress brings on a lot of sicknesses and illnesses. And this is very, very evident with this issue at the moment. And it's something we're going to have to monitor very closely. And as a council, it's important, as we did the last day of the council meeting, 
that we send out a very, very strong message that we are standing full square with mm-hmm. our own Donegal people looking for the 100% redress scheme. Uh, I stand full square with all my party colleagues and all the rest of the colleagues across the council in doing so. I'm delighted in 2019 when we formed this new cross-party uh, working arrangement in the council that number one on the agenda was us setting up our own MICA Donegal committee. That's very, very important. I want to join with the calls we've made earlier and I fully support it, that we should be asking for the chairman and the vice chairman of the NICA group, um, Martin McDermott and Albert Doherty, to be uh, part of the committee that's meeting nationally. They are our representatives and we have every confidence in them. I have to say for my part that Martin McDermott was very, very informative to all of us about NICA for years and years. And in fact, he was the first person that acknowledged that there was huge hurdles with the current scheme when it was identified. He has huge and vast knowledge of it. He, he knows firsthand and when it was uh, with him uh, in his own area some time ago, a number of years ago, uh, when he was identifying a lot of the challenges that we now seem to come fruition. Um, so we need to ensure that they have our full support. I'm glad as well that the, the government has recognised uh, that there will be uh, be no hurdles in the way to, to a public inquiry. That has been indicated very clearly by the government, and that's someone that people need and deserve the answers as well. Uh, I think it's the very least that people um, want to see a transparency and accountability of what went wrong here uh, in this area uh, over the years. Um, I think it's important as a council, uh, and I want to acknowledge the staff of the council as well, because they're human beings as well, and they have health, uh, and they have stress as well. And it's important that we acknowledge the huge challenge that it is for them. Donegal County Council are, um, I suppose, merely administrating this scheme on behalf of the government. That's a massive task. It's a massive task for them to undertake. And it's been a very, very challenging time for, for the management of the council and indeed the staff working in this area. And as we've called before, and I know Councillor McDermott uh, was working on it behind the scenes, for us to have additional resources in place to deal with this whole area around Micah. And I think when it was mentioned before about having the liaison officers uh, to deal with it is very, very important. Because that initial uh, conversation um, is very, very trying for many people. Um, it's been a very emotional time for many people. I've had conversations with many people late into the night and early morning who can't sleep at night because of it. And I think our council staff need to get the proper resources uh, to help them to deal with the support and the challenge that this is. Because this is just uh, more than some of the daily problems that we've all encountered over the years. But I want to acknowledge the council staff who have been working hard to try and come up with resolutions. Because I know the planning section have been working um, working hard, and I know Councillor Paul Canning, the chair of the SPC, has been working with Planet to try and maybe possibly introduce or change uh, through a statutory instrument uh, the issue of the, the rebuild and the planning and how we can alleviate a lot of the hurdles that's there as well. So behind the scenes, I think there's a lot of work happening and I want to acknowledge the council staff that's doing that and trying their best because it is a very, very challenging time for them as well. Um, the final point I'll make, we're in this together. We're all in it together. And we need to send out a very, very strong message that we will stand with our people and we will try and get what we can, the best deal for all of the people because it's affecting everybody. Class, colour or creed, it doesn't matter. And it's a massive, massive issue. And I'm glad today that we have the opportunity to hear that and to show the people and demonstrate to the people again that Donegal County Council is doing everything that it possibly can as a local authority to try and find solutions. Thank you very much.
Yeah. It's just boiling my rage. Now, get a B at uh, 100% redress, which for him to get to Mlando, be my money clear, not a meal shell. But I can redress a way index based. I guess faster, she'll be in the rate on the need to scan the banks, I guess the insurance companies, the rate scarce of a courteous star, I guess the rate of a shunner, which at the star is going to. For your condo, you're going to all. I guess me and you, Dina, Dunya, a tea, a chart, a realtor, Majinia Marini, a Vigil Gahomlan, a show, a smooching to go on the market, I guess, go on the policies, a good banks, I guess, as an insurance company. So the main small lunash, but the Dina Gary Corlash, go to for your condo, you're going to all scarch or be kept to scan. The banks to be a share condo. I guess insurance quality. I guess good job to the staff. I guess uh, presentation you're doing it. I guess me and you doing it. But you must have called Mueller Shaw faster. Faster by the Marech. Honey Wen and the Sean or and Karen or not Karen Donna but in this panel. I guess the Lifford at the problem shot the couple of chat. The Mahane to Hummer or Michael to a state of the account in the county and get door particular. We might get a slack couple of charting. The ruin of Tassio comes to Nashiki Kanuela, the Corley von Dagonal, or Shilam Gushatawa, the Gasminsul, the Taki at Homeland, or the Corley Rilegalier, a great dunya for the horror bun, to a state of Corley von Dagonal, a Gasnach of a Corre Brewer, a Fobble and Wienchen, a Gal, a Gasnamilche Hayu, a Honey Engineer Salasta, an Upper Shaw, a Yenu La Turish to the Corley von Dagonal, great dunya or Corley von Dag. For an omelon of Yogan, I guess Gare Dunyavija Operation Sidanaski, I guess the Masuliki Kakanuelic with Akat Omelon. Store Michael McBride, Er Akasha, East Lueka, Faduta, Adarn, the chap. Neen teams the chat to any way a jail ma when you put your cola timura, pass my vulture funds, or then you put your vulture when you're going to be a chill and turn it into a chicken. The line's terrible again there, hey, sorry. Hey, Jack, if I can make sure, thanks anyway. You're welcome, Hill. The last person I've indicated, as I say now, I can't I can't see most of these with Tom Conahan, I just indicated. Tom, you there? Thank you, Chair. Uh, all right. Um, I would just like to pay tribute to everybody taking part in this and uh, I'd like to thank you for the way you've chaired this meeting today I'm sure it wasn't easy and it wasn't a short one and uh, it's very important and we're looking over for everybody and, and I know everyone means well council, executive, Martin and Albert which is very important in that area and different other areas and uh, all very capable. And I would have to say that our, that our, our councillors are equally as capable of doing getting things sorted out as well. And the other, I'm not going to hold you too long because I know you've gone through a lot today. And um, the other thing is, I, I think now at this stage, you know, everybody has voiced their opinion. And the fact, that, as far as I would be concerned, I would think the talking's the talking finished now, locally and all the rest. And it's time to get on with it and uh, be more productive and get things sorted out and uh, let everybody pull together and work together. And I think, as you said yourself, it's the only way that things are going to be done. Thank you again, Chair. Oh, my God. That's uh, uh, Just, Frank, I'll let you in uh, briefly. I, I oh, yeah, can I ask one question? Uh, uh, can I come in first, uh, Chair? I indicated a question. In fairness, Martin didn't make a full contribution. He only kind of replied earlier. A couple of questions, Jack. Go ahead, Martin. Thanks, Jack. I think, again, thanks, Jack, for the meeting and the way you handled the meeting today. It was excellent. Thanks to everybody for their contributions and to the general public. I think there's just a couple of things, Jack. There's no point in going over everything again. Everybody knows the position we're in. Everybody knows where we are. Everybody knows that we want 100% redress. Um, everybody knows the issues that have been put by the committee and I want to acknowledge the committee, Paddy and Dever, Michael Doherty and Eileen Doherty, the work that they're doing in relation to that committee as well um, I suppose it, it is disappointing that our committee is not represented but look, that's, that's a decision that we made 
Um, just a couple of things that I want to to uh, put as the liaison officers it was something that, that uh, was being taken up a couple of times today. The sign that, that came up at our meeting, and we were assured at that meeting that it was it went to the department for a sign off for extra staff. I just want to know where that is and how quickly that can be set up, because I do think that that will be a very very important step uh, for the council uh, to have a liaison officer, two liaison officers. One based in the show, one based in Larry Kenny to, to deal with Larry Kenny uh, and the Norwood area. Um, I think that for both private and for council tenants, I think that that liaison officer could play could play a, re- a lead role and somebody that people could access on a daily basis. Uh, and I think it would be vitally important if that could happen as soon as possible. And maybe we could get an update uh, in relation to that. I think the the engineers are meeting this afternoon. Engineers Ireland with all the engineers um, to discuss uh, the issues that engineers are having, uh, to discuss the fears that engineers are having. I think it's important that Engineers Ireland are the group that runs the engineers and uh, that the engineers have signed up to. And I think it's important that those engineers uh, make those calls themselves. I think that we're not engineers. I think it's important that the engineers do make those calls and and come up with the, the, the answers that they need for themselves. I think the avenue through that is with Engineers Ireland, and as far as I know, they're meeting today at three o'clock to di- to discuss those uh, those things and, and go back to the department. So I think that's vitally vitally important. There's also uh, questions that have come up today in relation to quarries and whether tests have been done. I think they are important questions that the people do need answers to. I think that we as a council should um, have those answers for the general public and for ourselves. As to make sure, I mean, the, the biggest fear that we have in this is that there could be other houses outside you know, 2014, 2015, 2013, whenever this, this really comes to head. Um, and I think that them questions need to be answered. Uh, and we need to know what the situation is in relation to the checking of the quarries and the checking of aggregate and the checking of blocks and what has been happening today to make sure that that's not happening again. And we're all in agreement uh, that there should be a public inquiry to see why this happened, how this happened, and to make sure that it never happens again. And we're all in the same way on that, Jack. And I just want to, again, thank you for uh, conducting an excellent meeting today. Uh, and, and at least we can, we're all working together, and I think it's vitally important that we do all work together to get the best outcome, because the most important thing that we have to do now is get people's houses fixed, get people that are living in this nightmare situation to get them back to some type of a normal life. And I think that has to be our main priority. And I think we should allow the team that's there negotiating now until the end of July, the room uh, and the, the room to do those negotiations and give them our full support to see what comes out of that. And then we can make our judgments after that. Thanks, Jay. I'm sorry, if we're going to want to acknowledge the work that Councillor Doherty has done for the committee as well. Uh, that, that, that's everybody's indicated to make a, a contribution. Frank, I'm going to take you in briefly because I know you did have a little bit of time to start, and then I'll hand it over to the executive just for a response. No, thank, thank Thanks, you, Frank. thank you, Mayor. Um, the first point I want to make is I uh, spoke to John McLaughlin yesterday about Cassidy's uh, uh, concrete been poured down in Rathmullen, and we and Sternard, Lifford and Sternard MD had a proposal that that would stop, and that all funding and all money owned owed to Cassidy's would be withheld by the council. The next issue, I want to rebut what Councillor McDermott said earlier on, which I asked you at the very start and you've allowed me to come in. First of all, I accept what Councillor Albert Doherty has said, that he had no knowledge of the email in February. But as a public office holder, Councillor McDermott has a responsibility when information is given to him in the public interest. That public interest information should have been relayed to us as members But more importantly, that information was also relayed to the council staff. And they should have automatically told all the members of Donegal County Council. And I hope that the executive today are going to try and answer some of the questions that we have asked. In particular, when Councillor Brogan and Councillor Jerry McMoneagle were mayor of this county, did they engage with the expert panel? And did Councillor McDermott engage with that expert panel? Now, I specifically 
read out from Appendix 1 of the expert panel report, who are not experts, by the way. I read out what I wanted. I want to know what members of Donegal County Council met that expert panel, and I want to know what Donegal County Council officials met them, and what TDs in this county also met them, who all agreed with the 9010 scheme. And I want to know that. But I want to know the whole list from 1 to 21 on Appendix 1. List of persons, organisations who met with the panel. I asked that at the very start, and I want an answer today. And I want an answer from the former mayor, Jerry McMoneagle, if he had any dealings with the expert panel, and Councillor Kieran Brogan as mayor, did he have any dealings with the expert panel? And if they did, please disclose those discussions and whatever was agreed with them, as mayor of the county at the time. And if John Campbell, previous to that, also uh, had any engagement with the, the expert panel. So I want those questions answered. And I'll tell you this now through the chair. I want to finally say this. I want to thank you, Jack, personally for being the man I know you are and establishing this meeting. And the bottom line here is the previous mayor denied me the same, the same request that I requested for a special meeting. She denied it. Point blankly denied it. And the other final thing I'll say is that the members of any shown municipal district are well aware in 2014, uh, to, from 2009 to 2014, from 2014 to 2019, up to the present day, about the purchasing of those properties in Bunkrana. But not only that, they knew that they were leased on a long term leasing scheme. Simple as that, that is what the paper trail says. So, we need to start the work now. And people leaving this meeting today, that's not on as far as I'm concerned. This is the most important issue that we have to deal with as councillors. And we should be meeting every day, putting these issues to the council for the next month. We should have our own inquiry, what Donegal County Council and the allegations against Donegal County Council that are being made. We need to put people to account and hold them to account and get the answers that we need for the public and the public interest. And I will not support you, Councillor McDermott, as chair of the Make Action Group, because you did not relay a, a public interest information that was vital for us to start telling engineers to stop breaking the law and recommending remedial works. Public and private engineers, both in the pr private sector and the public sector, are breaking the law by recommending remedial works. Simple as that. And the final thing I'll say is, who from the Irish Concrete Federation met with the expert panel? That needs to be clarified by the council and by the department and by the panel. Because if it was if it was if it was David Cassidy or any people from Cassidy's, that is a kick in the teeth to us, the members of Donegal County Council, the public, and to every victim in this scandal today. So thank you, Chair. Okay. Well, intend to take on this, I don't know if you're going to take on this. Unless anybody else wants to come in there, I don't know if people named. Intend to go to the executive. The executive, uh, hundreds of questions have been put forward, hundreds of concerns. I think particularly all the public that are in here want to hear the response to those. Uh, 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 Mayor, just one Thanks thing, Mayor. One, 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 one thing, Mayor. How many, how many members of the public, how many members of the public have clicked on to this meeting today? Because that should be clarified. There's 99 participants at the minute, I think it was around 130 at one point. But folks, yeah, I think we want to confirm that we, 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 we need to move on from it. Go ahead, Martin. Yeah, I, don't I, in there. I just want a point of order. I never met with the expert panel. That's fair enough. It's noted. Everybody else, everybody else with that, happy to move on and get a response from the executive. Okay. Um, John McLaughlin, do you want to come in first? Or? There's a number of all the directors are here too, so everyone wants to speak. Go ahead, John. Yeah, sure, 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 I'll go first. No, and first of all, um, yeah, thank you very much, I'd say. I know we spoke the last day, and I'd open with, uh, as I did say the last day, we fully acknowledge the terrible situation that this is for homeowners and the anger and despair it causes right across the county. Uh, we spoke the last day about the three different strands we have. One was working as a council here to bring people together and with our communities. Two was the role we have by government in administering the scheme for the private houses. 
and three is the role for our own council housing stock. Three very important strands, and we have to balance them all. Uh, a lot of talk on the screen today about the history and so on, and the work from uh, the, the early special meetings of council, the lobbying of government, onto the expert panel, then the, the scheme getting set up around 2019. And I would say during that setting up of the scheme, the government asked us, would we administer it for them? And Donegal County said yes. We thought that would be a help to our local citizens. And we took on that added work at the time. And we were glad we took it on and we thought we could be helpful to that. Now, as it, as it, worked, as it turned out, there's concerns with that scheme. And while well, there's three parties, say, involved, there's the scheme itself by government, there's the applications, and then there's the processing. So, when, and I'm not going to comment today on which one which ones at fault here, but those are the three different prongs that have to be looked at. Uh, the, the, the rules that council staff are asked to follow, and then the applications themselves and how they match the scheme, and if the scheme is fit for purpose. And a lot of people have spoken about why it's not. And I'm not in a position today to comment on that, but I would accept the government's working through that right now this month with the working group. And we're all waiting for those replies also, and what the new revised scheme might bring, and how it might sort out some of these problems. I think also I'd, I'd mention, uh, and before I invite in some of the directors, uh, it's important for us uh, collectively to decide as a body, uh, can we be part of the solution, and how do we be part of that solution, as opposed to focusing on the problems. Lots of issues highlighted today, I would say, some of which we can answer now, we want, we want to and we will provide clarity around every single question on whether it falls to the council to answer, who else it might fall to, and if the council can be of assistance in getting those answers. And we'll do that separately. Uh, there's a lot of, and I have a lot of notes, I'm sure others have the full notes here on the different queries. And I might stop for now at that, and I might ask in first Joe Peoples, who's the Director of Housing and Corporate Services, to talk about I think three things uh, insofar as you can. One might be the procurement advice, uh, but that came up quite a bit the last day and was mentioned a couple of times a day. The, uh, how we're processing the schemes, including the liaison offers that we sought and agreed some time ago, and any other further staff. And then also on our plan for the council housing stock that we spoke about the last day and how, how there was merit in keeping both sets of housing working roughly in parallel, so no one would be left behind but Joe might comment on those three things, Joe, first, if that's okay, and I might mute, and then come back in. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Sam. Thanks, Kahira, and, and thanks, Chief Executive. Um, again, I just would begin by saying, as I did the last day, that it's a, an unforeseen situation that we're all dealing with here in the county, um, and it's important that we work together to achieve the best outcomes for our friends and our families and our communities. And that's, what, that's why we're all here and that's, that's all our objectives. And the Chief Executive mentioned the, the willingness of the Council about two years ago to administer the scheme. Because that's what we're here to do as public servants. We're here to help our people in the county. And that's why we decided to do that and wanted to do it and have worked to do it to the best of our ability. It is a very complex scheme, and we have seen the workings out of that complexity over the last 12 months since the scheme opened. And that has given rise to many of the issues that have been raised and are being raised in relation to the processing of applications and the decisions around um, the applications having regard to the terms of the scheme that we have to administer. So we have to make significant judgments around the terms of the scheme and we're duty bound to do that. And we have to be satisfied that if we're making a grant award that we can stand over that and that it's within the terms of the scheme and it's fair to the applicant and it's appropriate for the circumstances. And we're doing that at the moment in the context of the scheme as it currently exists. And the scheme may change and there might be adjustments made 
to scheme as we go forward. When the working group uh, work comes to a conclusion, um, hopefully at the end of this month. If there are individual applicants who are concerned about how their application has been processed, they could email me directly and I'll arrange to have them followed up personally. So any applicant who has a concern about their application or how their application was dealt with, please feel free to do that and we'll, we'll arrange to have them followed up and clarification provided. I'd say one of the one of the challenges in terms of the administration of the scheme was that complexity. And we were fortunate that colleagues in the housing directorate here had very extensive experience of the detail around the assessment that needed to be made from a technical perspective. And once we got onto that process then I suppose it became challenging in relation to opinions of engineers, maybe perhaps differing in relation to what what the appropriate outcome would be or what the appropriate uh, remedial works would be. And that has, that has been challenging for everyone involved in the process up to now, unquestionably, and continues to bring challenge, but we're working through that. And I think there's, there, there is certainly clarity emerging In terms of what happens going forward, um, we obviously wait to the national deliberations and see what emerges from that. And if there are changes to the scheme, as I said, we'll, 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 we'll certainly look at what the options are in relation to that and how the scheme actually might be improved in, in the broadest sense in terms of primary decision making for our citizens so that they can move on with the remedial work that's are so badly needed and so urgently needed. In terms of the the legal advices that the, the members are awaiting, the legal advice on, on procurement that the members asked for before is currently being prepared and the intention is certainly to have that available for members at the meeting uh, in July, which is on the 19th of July, so that information that legal opinion will be available to the members uh, at the July meeting. In terms of in terms of the social housing, absolutely accept that there's a huge body of work to be done there, and it needs to be done apace. It's not something we can delay uh, at this stage. But as the chief executive has said, it's important that these processes are, are the processes are done in parallel as well. So I'm very conscious of the concern of our tenants and the challenges faced by our staff. We're trying to give good advice and support our tenants through this unprecedented situation that we find ourselves in. I think as I said at the meeting uh, previous to this, we have now got the results back on a number of houses that have done that have been tested in line with the, the, the national standard. We're preparing remedial works plans on an individual house basis. So that will tell us what work is required to our houses in general terms and in broad terms and what the likely cost will be. And that work would, would expect to be completed probably within the next week. That will, that will then form the basis of an overall indication of what the likely cost would be of remediation to our council housing stock, which we consider to be in and around a thousand that we might consider to be affected at the moment. But as we all know with MICA, we couldn't be definitive about that. And it may be that that number would rise or increase with the passage of time. So it would be wrong to say that, you know, definitively we have 960 houses or 1,040 houses. That will be a moving target, members. And, and it's something we'll, we'll, um, we'll deal with as we go. But we're certainly very clear 
where we have houses affected, we're very clear in what estates those houses are, where they are, uh, and the, the number of houses. So we're in, in and around the high 900s at the moment, but as I say, that's a moving target. In terms of in terms of delivering that body of work, there's no question that we will have to put a dedicated team of staff at that work, and we plan to do that. And that would include uh, te senior technical staff who would do the assessments, do the design on what's needed in terms of media works, do the procurement, and oversee the works. And we do not have the resources currently employed to do that, so we have to put that team in place. And we also have to address the issue that members have raised as well. And I think there's an option here for combining the two, liaison with tenants and liaison with applicants for the for the private scheme. Liaison officers there. I think there's a, a need for liaison with tenants and a need for liaison with applicants to the scheme as well. And that's something... Drink. That we have gone to the department on in terms of getting approvals uh, for liaison officers, as Professor McDermott has said, and we expect that that would be met favourably by the department to give them to employ those staff and to cover the pay costs of them and and whatever additional staff we may need as well. So maybe I'd leave it at that. Could you hear just in terms of where we're at with the of the programs that we're running at the moment. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, yeah, what we might do, and I see uh, Kyle and Bertie's hand up, and maybe Kierlich, we might take the other directors first. Is that okay? I uh, tend to let all the directors in first before any consulting with their questions. Um, yeah, the next person to speak would be, I suppose, Liam Ward, if Liam didn't mind, in terms of the, uh, the part that falls under the planning directorate. Uh, uh, th thanks, Chief Executive, and 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 thanks, Kahirla, um, and 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 members. Um, as well, first of all, I, I I would like to to concur with the comments of the Chief Executive uh, in terms of um, as well as the Executive and 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 sharing the as well as the the concern for our people in the county that are are going through this at the moment. And and just to confirm what some members have said as well, that obviously. We all know, and, and including within my own family circle, people who are going through this at the moment, and we do fully appreciate the real impact this is having on, on, on people's lives, uh, and we're, we're certainly not immune to that. Uh, and you know, we're anxious to play our part in, in, in helping to, you know, to, to, to seek redress for that. Um, there were a number of issues which fall directly uh, under the, as both the, the, the planning, uh, the broad planning services. Um, I, I'll quickly go through them first and then maybe respond in some detail, as much detail as I possibly can at this point. Uh, the first issue was, was raised by Councillor McBrearty in, in his introduction uh, in relation to action against legal action against quarries and, and referencing a specific quarry. The second issue was raised by a, a number of members, uh, and I think it is an important point, and I know uh, it's important that, it, that it, there's clarification around it, and that is the role of the Council. The role of the Council in, in the various periods through which we have now come uh, with regard to the, both the certification or the testing or the approval of concrete blocks or concrete uh, or products generally that uh, get, into the, um, get into the marketplace. So I, I certainly want to return to that. Um, the third issue that was raised, and again uh, by a number of councillors, was uh, in relation to um, planning permission being extended for a specific quarry. Um, uh, I may not be able to get into the detail on that, but I will certainly come back to that one. Um, the fourth issue that was raised by, again, by a number of members was around uh, the role of, of what role our planning section, our planning department can have in terms of um, maybe influence or help, helping to um, develop appropriate regulations around, you know, the planning permissions required for for individuals who are now having to uh, demolish their houses and rebuild their houses, and if they are within the own, their own the existing footprint, 
you know what what regulations could be and certainly happy to return to that uh, and the council is obviously happy to play, play its part in that there was a, a, a few spe very specific questions uh, raised by councillor Jerry Crawford uh, in relation to I suppose can we be sure that houses being built today that um, they are not uh, using or that they're not uh, defective blocks or defective concrete products going into them and the other specific question he raised was do we know when the use of the, such products was stopped now, I'm not going to be in a position to be definitive on that very last one but I'll certainly come back to the one before that um, so the first one taking them in order and what they were raised was the question um, posed by, by Councillor McBrady, um seeking as suppose updates in, in relation to uh, actions against quarry operators. Um, he, he mentioned um, that he raised this matter at a Sonora Municipal District meeting and he asked the director to director who was there to, to raise the matter directly with me. I can confirm that that was done. My colleague did raise the matter with me uh, and subsequent to that um, I, I have obviously taken advices from, from our own legal um, legal representative um, as, as members as most generally but certainly members in the Sonora uh, Lifford Municipal District are aware uh, the specific one that was referenced by Councillor McBerty is, is ongoing for a considerable period of time a considerable period of time I understand the members frustration uh, with regard to I suppose um, seeking the right outcome there or getting the right outcome um, but I would say to him that we are in the hands of the court here um, and um, that we are due in, in the court again next week on this one. I'm not going to get into the detail of it because clearly that would not be appropriate. But just to say that this is an ongoing enforcement matter and it is before the courts and will be before the courts next week again. Um, and as I say, other than to confirm that, I'm not in a position to go into any further detail today. Um, the next item I wanted to move on to then, which I, I agree is, 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 both is, is fundamental here and has been raised and a number of members have said is, is, both is the role of the local authority in terms of um, the, the, the contra concrete products, concrete blocks and, and other products uh, that are in the marketplace. Um, what I would like to do here, I suppose, is, is, is to make reference to the, the, the regulations that were in place at various times during the last while. Um, I think the first one is the, the regulations that were in place prior to 2013, when um, I suppose the, the, um, the community product regulations of, of 2013 came into play. So the ones that were in play before that, and I think there would be a general view that quite a, quite a number, and I'm not being specific here, but I think it's fair comment to say that a number of the houses and, and buildings that are that are now affected by Medicare would have been constructed prior to 2013. So it was important to look at what the regulations were in place in that time and what role the council may or may not have had. So suppose the principal regulations and forgive me, members, I'm going to read directly from some notes here that I have. So, um, But the principal regulations that were in place in that time were cited as the European Communities Construction Products Regulations 1992, and they came in uh, to operation on the 1st of January 1993. It's under a specific uh, statutory instrument. Um, they were amended in 1994. Uh, the amendment... Uh, were quite minor in the period in 1993. The, the mark to, uh, I suppose, prove that products were to a standard was known as an EC mark. From 1994 onwards, it was known as the CE mark. Um, and these regulations were in place until they were revoked by the 2013 regulations coming into play. So what did those regulations say? Those regulations say, uh, I suppose, first of all, what was the purpose of them? Um, these were, I suppose, European Union directives and that their primary objective was to facilitate the free movement of construction products across the 
member states. That was their primary objective. But what did they say was that a product which bears the EC mark, as it was known at the time, and then changed to the CE mark, uh, shall be presumed until the contrary is proved to comply with the requirements for placing the product on the market and with the provision of any other community directive applicable to that product. Um, so there was a proce process of attestation of conformity with technical specifications. Those were set out in the regulations and, I suppose, and, and they placed certain responsibilities on different players within, within the process. Um, I suppose there was a responsibility first and foremost on the manufacturer uh, to ensure that their fab factory production control was in place and that they took testing of samples taken at the factory by the manufacturer in accordance with the required tests. And then there was an approved bodies task, and that was uh, included the type testing of the product, the inspection of the factory and the factory production control, the continuous surveillance and assessment and approval of factory production control, and possibly, as it was referred to at the time, was the audit testing of samples taken at factory on the market or the construction site. Um, the approved body referred there, and I suppose it's important to be clear, that the council wasn't the approved body, um, uh, because this was effectively certifying the products, uh, and that role is carried out by the National Standards uh, of Ireland, the NSAI. But the, those regulations did, but uh, ha, ha, sorry, did outline a role for the local authority, um, and under Article 8, it says that the minister, the minister or a building control authority, may appoint officers to be authorised officers for the purposes of the regulations. And authorised officers have powers to obtain access to the manufacturing sites, to request documentation such as the EC certificates of conformity, to take samples for examination or testing, and to require tests to be performed by an approved body to verify compliance with minimum requirements. The local authority also had uh, powers assigned to it during this period, which included the making of recommendations to the minister concerning the prohibition or restriction of products going into the marketplace and for the prosecution of offences. I suppose to answer the question, as far as I'm aware today, that no such reports or recommendations to the Minister were made in the period up to 2013 that I'm aware of. If we move on then to the, to the period since 2013, um, and this is where the construction product regulations came into being and were effective from the 1st of July 2013. And I suppose that um, that those regulations uh, established um, market surveillance authorities, and the local authorities were appointed as the market uh, surveillance authority for their functional areas. Um, and it, it goes on to say, and again, I, I read directly from the the uh, from from the regulations. It says a market surveillance authority shall be a building control authority in respect of construction products placed on the market or, as the case may be, made available on the market within its functional area and shall be responsible for the market surveillance of co construction products placed on the market or, as the case may be, made available on the market within its functional area and shall take such steps as are necessary for this purpose. And the market surveillance authority, in effect, the, the building control authority, or in essence, the local authority, shall appoint authorised officers for the purpose of the regulations, and these officers shall have powers to obtain accesses to places of manufacture or storage of any concrete product. So there's clearly a, a role there uh, from the 2013 regulations. So what did happen? Um, I suppose in that period, um, as I said, the council were designated as the market surveillance authority. So following the introduction of that, Donegal County Council, as this market surveillance authority, wrote to all manufacturers and suppliers in the county seeking evidence of their CE marks and declarations of performance for construction products that they were placing in the market. And this included all concrete products 
and supplies and supply suppliers, sorry, I beg your pardon, and suppliers. So the next, I suppose, period then would be uh, the establishment of the National uh, Building Control Office. And while that was, um, I suppose, commenced in 2014, and the role of the National Building Control Office was to provide oversight, support and direction for the development and standardization and implementation of building control as an effective shared service in the 31 local authorities uh, document uh, to being in, in 2014 and it has been managed on behalf of the local authority sector by Dublin City Council. But there was, was a specific development which occurred in, in 2020 which is material here and, and it's linked actually to um, the decision by the UK to, to leave the European Union and it came in uh, as uh, standard and, uh, statutory instrument 682 of 2020 that's referred to as the withdrawal of the United Kingdom from the European Union Consequential Provision Act 2020 the Construction Products Market Surveillance Regulations 2020 and as I say it appointed Dublin City Council the National Building Control Office as the lead local authority for National Market Surveillance Office, which, as I said, pr provides the, the oversight and the role there on behalf of the 31 building control authorities. Um, what I can say in relation to that is that the Donegal County Council Building Control Office is in regular contact with the NBCO, um, and that within the last number of weeks, uh, the National Building Control Office has visited the county and has carried out visits to a number of quarries in the county, primarily in the Letterkenny and in his own areas. Um, I, I don't have the details of their findings, as, as they're not available to me at this time, but I expect that, I, that we, the council will receive them in due course. Um, so that's that's where, where I, 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 I leave that particular one, uh, Mayor. And if I can move on to uh, the other matters that, that, that were raised, um, in particular in relation to uh, what role Donegal Planning Department can play in, in, in I suppose, informing regulations that might be helpful to uh, individuals who now have to seek plan permission. We have engaged in that process through uh, myself and our senior planner and consultation was obviously with, with, with colleagues. Um, and I suppose we have given some um, suggestions, certainly to department officials, as to how uh, regulations could be framed that would be, uh, I suppose, make matters more straightforward for people who have to seek planning permission where they find themselves in this situation. So uh, we have played a part in that and are, are, are obviously willing and, and happy to play a further role in that as well. Um, I suppose I'll return then, I think the final two points, and I hope, oh sorry, no, there, there's one matter. Um, the, the, uh, the quarry that was raised in relation to the decision to grant uh, a, an extension to the term of a, of, a, of a quarry, a specific quarry was referenced. Um, I, I don't have the, the, the detail of that available to me today. I'm happy to review it along with the senior planner and to bring the details back to, to, to council. No difficulty in doing that, but I don't have the details on that available today. Um, so then the final two questions were those posed by, by councillor Jerry Crawford and, and was dealing with the second one first, which is in relation to when, when was the use of defective concrete products stopped? I'm, I'm not in a position to be definitive in that in that regard, I, I just not in a position to, to you know, to, to be definitive in that regard. But I think the question you also asked was, can we be sure that houses currently being built um, are not, you know, that are, that they're not defective products going into those houses? And I suppose this does bring us directly into the the building regulation side of things. Um, and I suppose the building control amendment regulations now requires that the design and construction of buildings is verified during construction through the execution of an inspection plan overseen by a registered construction professional 
uh, known as the assigned certifier. And that enables the builder and the assigned certifier to sign a statutory cer certificate, certificate of compliance on completion. So the builder and the assigned certifier are responsible for ensuring that workmanship and materials which they select comply with the requirements of the building regulations and that all test certificates and confirmations are satisfactory and collated to allow the cert for certification of compliance upon completion of the of the building. So that, that is an important point, Councillor Crawford, and that's the clarification on that one, as far as I'm aware. Kahirla, I think that's uh, all the matters that were uh, that are relevant to, to the wider planning service, and maybe I'll hand back to, to John on that. Yeah, thank you very much, Liam. And just I might ask uh, Michael McGarvey, he's going to talk to us about the issue about the, uh, I suppose, as the construction and demolition of waste arising in the event you have to demolish the house or home and the uh, outer leaf, and the options that might be available there in terms of if it has to go to a disposal site, or the options to actually reshape your site if you're getting planning to use it within that's important as well. Uh, so, so or, or, or uh, when it goes off the site, it makes it different. So if you can use it on your site, there's certain advantages. But Michael might take us through that. I know there's mentioned earlier by Councillor Gary Doherty with SBC chatting about that as well next week. So I'll hand over to Michael for a few minutes. Thank you, John, and uh, Chief Executive, and uh, thank you, members, and Kyrla. And uh, just like to again share the concerns that have been expressed by the Chief Executive and by Liam, and by all of the members here today. Um, we all share them. We all, unfortunately, know people, family members, and friends who are exposed to this very traumatic and worrying um, situation. So um, just go on, and I won't uh, repeat what's said, but I would share all of the sentiments that have been raised here. And uh, we'd obviously like to, from our point of view, just try and help in whatever way we can as a team and as a, an executive, um, working with yourselves as well, and with the public and with the others involved. Um, just first, in terms of the waste material, um, I've discussed this with the chair of the uh, Climate Action and Environment Strategic Policy Committee. We're meeting on Wednesday next. We've added this to the agenda, and uh, we will be giving an update there and we'll be coming back to the Strategic Policy Committee and to the elected members um, with updates on this situation. Um, basically, first of all, there are a number of um, options for reuse of clean, inert demolition material. Um, there's, as the Chief Executive point there, where you're on a standalone site, which can be reprofiled where planning is in place, that's an option there. Where again, where acceptance of material on another site, and there's a process called certificate of uh, registration and planning in place and can be accepted there. Again, that's clean, inert material. However, there is a, a definitely a need for large scale sites to be made available for the acceptance of clean, inert demolition material, because we're talking very, very significant quantities here. Um, and uh, that's currently not available. There are options to be looked at, and we will be exploring and are exploring these and considering these. There's basically holes, for example, even in quarries where they came from that could be granted waste facility permits and licenses. And we're looking at these regionally and with working groups nationally in terms of the overall construction and demolition issue. And obviously, the MIC is just an addition to that. But what we want to look at as well, and we've raised this again, what um, with our colleagues and with our regional support teams um, that we want to look at, you know, going into the whole circular economy. If we are, there are issues with getting permits to where to put such material, but we want to look at this as an opportunity for a whole circular economy. If we do put such material in the ground now and get it permitted, etc., we certainly don't want to be going all over the country with it. We want these to be available in Donegal and for people, and we will be working to get that clarified on the larger scale, but we also want that material possibly to be available going forward where we'll free deposit material and we get clarification of what to be used for, that it could be actually um, reused going forward in the whole circular economy. Um, just that's something just that we, as I say, we have raised with our colleagues regionally and nationally with the meeting with the department again on that and we'll update the members going forward. So, Chair, if that's okay on that one, I was just going to move on to one other issue, if that's okay. Um, Chief Executive, maybe just to mention the, the Aura Leisure Centre at this point. Yes, 
Yeah, go ahead, Michael. And yeah, I would acknowledge there's a query as an example in the chat box as well. Probably building like, this is one example, I suppose. Show you, Michael, you might update us an hour. Yeah, I'll give the update on Dora. Just from the aura, um, just to give an update on that, and I know this is where she's been raised, was cracking um, noticed there in early uh, 2020 and it was assessed, um, passively assessed uh, by the management of the aura and by our structural engineer over a period now deteriorated to the point of further examination was deemed to be necessary and that was carried out. Um, and the, that's in the flume tower which is where you might know where the water slides come down. It's a two-story section there. And it was a part of the block work when the assessment was carried. It was part of the block work in and around the cracking was of poor structural quality and was deemed not to be fit for purpose and presented potential risk. And um, so following the structure and cost-benefit analysis, a decision was made to remove all the block work and the outer leaf. And maybe I just point out here, first of all, that the structure is formed from a cavity wall the inner wall is a reinforced um, concrete structural shaft and um, with a, a rigid cavity insulation and an outer um, 100 millimeter block wall. And that's the wall we're talking to here. So it wasn't a structure supporting the tower in any way. There was no risk there. It was just the risk of the, the block work becoming loose. And um, so we erected scaffolding there, examined it, and made the decision to actually take it out and reconstruct that with new block work as a matter of urgency. And that is now being moved on and it is substantially complete there. A further visual inspection of the exterior of the centre did not reveal any amendment in this issues of concern or particularly significant cracking. And again, however, we have um, engaged an approved consultancy engineering firm to conduct a full report on the block work and to advise the council on appropriate actions going forward. And we'll just say there for the remainder of the building, and it's just worth pointing that out, that there's fair face blocks um, is used internally in the main gym, for example, and the changing rooms of these are for a different source. And... Um, we believe, but we will again get this verified. There is no evidence of cracking, and we don't believe that the firm the same source and that it isn't exposed to the same risk there. But again, we will get all this tied down. Large parts, again, of the external facade is either glazed, that's in, uh, you know, like the glass finish that you see there, or it's uh, concealed with paneling and external insulation and not exposed to the prevailing weather conditions, the same weather conditions. There are some then external single story storage areas and another area some, uh, um, near the flume tower and there is some visible cracking there and that will need, there is a potential for further deterioration when it's not nearly to the extent it was, we will be carrying out further tests and that. So that's where we stand at the moment that um, there is and we will be back, there's uh, questions raised there about is it safe to use the centre. We believe it is safe to use the centre, we have actually assessed that. We are actually um, have engaged external consulting engineers to do a full report. I think they're going to be in there um, the early part of next week, but we will be coming back. But that's our position at the minute. Otherwise, we wouldn't have it open to the public and wouldn't have been using it if we didn't deem it to be fit. But we will be verifying that when questions are raised by ourselves and by others. It's only right that we actually take whatever steps that are taken to determine what steps need to be taken or different steps. So we'll um, update the members as we add more information comes available. Thank you, Kyla, and the Chief Executive. I'm not sure if there's anything else you wanted me to cover. Well, then that's, a, that's it for now, Michael. Yeah, yeah and, and, and Kyla, I don't know some of that kind of what I'm, what I might suggest, and there's a number of questions we can't answer today, uh, and we will try and get answers to those in the coming period. And then others, we're not in a position to answer, but we'll see if some others can answer them, or we'll tell that. I suggest to you, Kyla, we would prepare a chart of those, uh, issue the members, but I suggest also we might just publish them on our website, perhaps the following day with your permission, and we might do them blocks because there's so many questions there. And we'd also pick up, there's some questions going through in the chat box there from members who are on for the public. we we'll pick those up as well, because their replies might be useful for everyone else to see as well. Take your look. Thanks, thanks for the response, John. I particularly welcome that idea of putting the, the answers up on, on the website. I think that'd, that'd be great. Um, the entire purpose of today, as well as seeking clarity on so many issues, was uh, to demonstrate the open, openness and transparency that we tend to uh, exhibit from the council. So 
I think that's that's very very much welcome. And there has been hundreds of questions. Um, so counselors, any counselors that have any questions or anything they want to follow up on, um, can send them on to me too. We can put them down in writing. And I think that's that's a great initiative that we will have them on our on our website. Um, I think everybody would welcome that. Um, there has there's, there's two counselors have indicated that just to come back in and counselor Frank McBride first and then counselor Megan McBride. Uh, did, did any other members of staff of the executive want to come in just before I open that again? And, and as I say, you know, these these questions will be coming. We will have a meeting again soon and we can follow up on, on everything else too. So unless there's something that's been missed, um, is no, that probably, okay? To, probably, to probably the other director not today, but they're involved at world with the management of the council. I think uh, and they'll assist with the answers, not today. Okay. Councillor McBrady? Well, th- thank you, um, Mayor, f- uh, for your uh, patience. Um, but first of all, I need to address uh, what uh, Director Joe Peoples has come up with. Um, first of all, the council should not be doing remedial works on any council-owned property. And I want the names of council engineers that are recommending that or private companies that have been brought in, consultant engineers, to do that recommendation. Secondly... The the uh, the council is in breach of contract with the tenants. That is clear. That is the law on it. They're in breach of contract by not delivering a product that is safe for the tenants. And I'm now calling on the tenants to stop paying the rent and put their rent money into a post office account because that will protect them from the council going after them in the courts where they can tell the judge we've paid our money into a post office account and until the council gives us the proper, adequate property, they won't get the money until then. The next issue that I want to deal with is the issue of the emergency injunction that I have requested. Now, Liam Ward is, in my opinion, using the council solicitor, and I blame the council solicitor, I don't blame, I don't blame Liam Ward for this. They never should have went to the district court for an injunction against Island Moor. Now, you have not stopped the activity in that development, that unauthorised development in an area of conservation. And that is the reality here. If you had got that injunction in the High Court, we wouldn't be talking about it now because the place would be closed up because the High Court doesn't mess about. So, I'm asking the question, why did our county solicitor recommend to go to the district court in the first place to get an injunction to stop the development in Island Moor. Now, David Cassidy rang me personally, and I I, I put this on the record, so I did before, about me complaining on behalf of the, the residents in that area. He is continuing, up until today as far as I know, taking aggregate out of that development. Not directly out of the river, but the stocks that are down there, which have not been tested for using for aggregate. So I'm asking now the chief executive to deal with this issue personally now over your head, Liam, because the county solicitor obviously doesn't want to deal with it for whatever reason. Now, I want to touch on the point here that Michael McGarvey has come up with. Now, the Aura Centre, I want to know what blocks have been used to rebuild the works that have been done in there because it should not be remedial work. You're an engineer, Michael. You know your ethics. You know your oath you took when you became an engineer. And no engineer can sign off on remedial works. None whatsoever. And I want to know what engineer has been employed by the council that has signed off on those works. I want to know today. Not only that, I want to know if there has been any testing done to the concrete foundations of that building, which has been flooded a number of times, which could be affected with mica, pyrolite or pyrite. First of all, I'm a steel fixer and a very good one, so I was. Many boys that worked along with me across the water will tell you. Pyrolite will eat in to the reinforcing used in concrete. It might take 20, 30 years to do it, but it will do it because of sulfuric acid created in the pyrolite itself. Now, I want to know exactly what the reports are on the damage done during the floods in the Aura Centre. And I want to know them today. Now, this scandal is like 
the water contamination true stories in America. One recently done in a Hollywood movie. But this is on a far bigger scale what has been done to people's homes and properties. Anybody wants to watch what people do to cover up, watch the Hollywood movie about the contamination of water in, in towns and villages in the US. Because this is exactly what has happened here. There's been a cover up at government level, assisted by whoever, and I'm not making any allegations, but if the council doesn't want to give me answers on the issues that I've asked, they'll answer the questions in a public inquiry. Because if I go into the public inquiry and cross-examine like I did in the Garda, Garda Tribunal, the Morris Tribunal, I won't have no mercy for nobody. And I'm telling you this now. You'll have to answer questions in the High Court because we only have to we only have to run one case to expose everything. Because there's going to be thousands of cases coming down the road, just like the Army deafness cases where 6,000 soldiers were compensated. So if people think that I'm messing about, they better wake up. Because what has been said today has been far better. If I was your solicitor, I would have told you not to answer any questions. Because the answers we've got today is pure and utter waffle. That's what it is. Waffle. And I don't care if you're offended or not. It's waffle. Pure waffle. If you were in a court of law or if you were in a tribunal of inquiry, you would answer the questions. But you are not answering the questions. And through the chair, I'm putting this to you, chair... We need answers. And we, we we need to meet tomorrow again to get answers. Then we should be meeting tomorrow. And members of this council should not be leaving this meeting because this is the biggest public interest case that this country has ever seen. Donegal has suffered with corruption for many years. In particular, the Donegal Garda corruption case that my family exposed. But this is a far higher level of corruption. Far higher level. And everyone's entitled to the presumption of innocence and natural justice. But at some stage, everybody here in front of us will have to answer the questions. And the public will judge today the response of members. Some of them, they will respond, they will respond, they will respond on Facebook and other social media outlets about, in my opinion, some of them rallying the wagons and circling the wagons for their government parties. And not only that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm fed up listening to this. I'd like to thank this person and I'd like to thank that person. Anybody that's working for Donegal County Council are getting well paid to do so. Far more than I'm getting paid for sitting here. And I'm going to tell you this now. The bottom line here is this, this thinking, the, the members thinking this person and that person, I can't stand it anymore. I can't take it. I can't actually take this anymore. You are getting well paid for doing your jobs. I don't thank anybody for doing their jobs. I thank you for your courtesy, but I don't thank you for doing your jobs. And the issue here is, the chairman of the MICA committee withheld information that was vital for me and every other member, highlighting the failure of the council and engineers recommending remedial works. Now, a PhD means you're a doctor. Dr. Ambrose McCluskey is a doctor. The engineers, that rec the engineers that give recommendations to the expert panel are not PhDs. They don't have PhDs and they're not experts. There's been no peer review studies done on this issue of mica, pyrite or pyrolite or any mineral that affects concrete products. And that's where the reality of this is. So no one can, can recommend remedial works. And I heard all I've heard from the executive, from, from the, the, the director of housing, all I've heard is remedial works. Well, I'm telling you something now. Be prepared for legal action against you if you try to attempt to continue this carry on of remedial works. Because remedial works cannot be done with a house or a property that is owned by anybody that has mica, pyrite or pyrolite. Especially a house with pyrolite when it melts and rusts the wall ties in that property. And I had, I had with the thanks of John McLaughlin, I have had the work stopped in St Johnston where tenants on their hap are under severe threat of the, the inside of their houses falling down around them while work is going on outside because there's been no protection of them for them, those hap, those hap tenants in St Johnston. There's been no protection for them whatsoever. The weight bearing part of the house that, is, that, is, that they're inside in has not been stayed by acros or any protection outside. The scaffolding alone is a joke. And what do you call it? 
John McLaughlin assured me that the house, the, the health and safety authority would be sent down there to look at the whole place because it's the responsibility of the council down in St Johnston because they own the road, they own the footpaths and they own half the properties in the estate itself. But the answers we've got here today are pathetic. Pathetic. They're absolutely pathetic. And I don't apologise for saying that. Pathetic. And I'll tell you something now. You better all waking up because I'm only starting. I'm only starting to ask the hard questions. And I better get answers. Or I'll get the answers in the High Court or I'll get the answers in the Tribunal of Inquiry. One or the other. Take your pick and you can bum your chairman of the, the, the MICA committee all you want. What he should do is resign from the Fianna Fáil party now and show people that he is serious. And then I'll take him serious then when he does do that. But I'm asking the final question here now. Cairn Brogan, mayor of this county in 2016, how many houses did you buy of him that could possibly have MICA? I'm asking that question now. Tell me now. I've asked it behind the scenes. I'm now asking it publicly. Or any other member that is an association with contracting that sold properties to Donegal County Council. I'm asking that question now. And the members can block me all they want, but I'll get answers. I'll get answers either from the council or through a freedom of information request. So, i probably said too much now, but I'm telling you something now. I'm only starting. And when I start fighting corruption, and when I start fighting for justice for people, I don't stop till I get the justice. So thank you, Chair, for accommodating me today and thank you for, for allowing me to speak and thank you for allowing me to ask the questions that need to be asked. No problem. And to, to, to be fair, to, to, to Chief Executive is coming to be answering every single question that's been asked today in, in writing and to be put on the website, including the ones from the members of the public as well. You've joined us here today. So you know, we, we, we'll see those answers. We, we can judge those answers. We'll be coming back in meetings. We've all agreed that this is the most important issue that we're ever going to deal with in this county. So if it takes another 100 meetings, I will facilitate another 100 meetings. But I think in the, in the meantime, the commitment from the Chief of the Executive is a good one. We answer every single question uh, and make them available to the public. I think, I think we can't ask for much more than that at the moment. The okay, can, hear that, can, hear that, can I ask a, a question just for clarification, please? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Michael, be right in too. Okay, no, go ahead. It's just something that uh, two people's, two people's uh, director servers uh, put a figure of 900 houses. Uh, and up until now, we, we were informed that there was 1,300 1, uh Social houses affected. Is, is Joe now after further inspections or is, and testing uh, saying 900 now? Just if we could have that clarified, please, from Joe. Yes, Kahira, what, what I'm saying at the moment is definitively I think we can say it's in the high 900s, 980 or 990. But I think the key point I was making was we could only establish definitively uh, once we did once we did testing and perhaps as well, Councillor, with the passage of time, houses may deteriorate in areas where potentially we never expected that they would. So I think there was in the period that in question here between acquisitions and construction, I think the house, the council had uh, 1,900 new houses into stock. So I suppose that's the scale of what we're dealing with in this particular period. But the uncertainty around whether an issue would emerge in relation to a particular estate or a particular house that might not be on our radar at the moment, then I suppose that that was that might be something that might emerge into the future. So we cannot be definitive about that, but we're we're quite certain of that first number I gave you that is selling around that nine hundred and eighty, nine hundred and ninety at the moment. That's but we're quite clear on that. Okay. We've had good time with this now, so let's do some different. I've, I've come to make a red name because from Martin Florin. You look around too, Tom, we? Yeah, and then Tom. So, my, my guy, Brad, Martin Florin, and Tom Collin. Okay, um, thank you, Chairman. I'm just coming in to clarify um, something. Uh, for some reason or other, uh, I'm not able to log into the chat box. And, uh, but I would just like to reply to a chat that was posted by uh, Roisin Gallagher. And uh, the, the post read, um, how can Councillor Michael McBride suggest replacing the outside leaf uh, and complete contradiction to Dr. Ambrose McCluskey, um, who's adamant that this is wrong. And uh, just 
Um, I haven't at any time recommended the replacement of without or leaf as a solution. Um, as everyone that I have discussed Michael with will testify to. And the inner leaf is the leaf in the house that carries the weight, the weight of the roof. And as far as I can ascertain from talking to people about the tests that are being done in houses that have mica, that the inner block is probably roughly um, coming in around about five newton. And I've always said that both, um, that what I would be recommending is that houses would be demolished. And when I mentioned about the outer leaf earlier on, I was merely giving an example that was given to me by a building contractor who has replaced outer leaves, that um, it was taking four people uh, three months to uh, replace the outer leaf in a house. I do not subscribe to the replacement of the outer leaf myself. Um, and I think I developed that point to say that it was going to take 500 people 10 years, and that was only for if they were replacing the outside leaf. That was an example that I give. So I want to make it clear, Rochin, and I do apologise to you and to everybody else that's online if I didn't make myself absolutely clear. I've always said that I do not subscribe to the replacement of the outside leaf only, because in my opinion... You're only putting a plaster over a problem when you replace the outside leaf. So, rushing look. She's just clarifying there. Well, it wasn't rushing. I know rushing well. Now. She's just clarifying. It wasn't her that said it. I think it was another participant. But um, look, I apologise. But anyway, that 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 look, I I, I just want to apologise if if, if, if I uh, if people um, if I didn't make myself clear. That's all I'm trying to say here. And um, I think. I, for definite, don't subscribe to just the replacement of the outside leaf and never have. So, look, thank you, Chairman, for giving me the time to clarify that. I think it's important, and I, I just I couldn't reply to it. I can't get on the, on the chat box. So, thank you. No, that, that's understood. Uh, Councillor Martin Farn, Councillor Tom Connell. Just thank you, Jack. Uh, we'll keep you too long. Just, Michael, just... Um, Welcome to the fact that you're having the, the meeting on Wednesday, I think next week in SCC in terms of uh, the Water Brothers open the beginning of the meeting about um, identifying sites for the, the rubble and so on and so forth and to look at that. But what I want to ask you to look at as you're doing that, that um, any of your own is a, is a big peninsula. So it'll be important that you know that when you identify these sites that they're basically made accessible for people whenever they have to demolish their houses. I would be saying sites, for example, in North and Zone, South and Zone. You wouldn't want someone, say for example, in my own area of Maville, having to travel away to, you know, miles and miles away to dispose of the of, of the rubble. So I think when, when you're having your meeting, possibly next week that you would be looking at that, the, the, the you know the geography of it, and to make it accessible for people whenever they have to demolish their house. To have to take your house down uh, was a big thing in itself, and um, I can only imagine, you know, it's not just about knocking down, you're knocking down a family home. So I just want to bring that point up. The other thing I just want to come on to me would be a good friend Frank and Berti there. And Frank and I have been good friends over many, many years. We've been on the council together. And I think he's just gone really, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, Frank, overboard a wee bit in relation to the chairman of our MICA committee. Because Martin is a very honourable person, very well respected, um, and then he's your own here. And I would ask you maybe... Uh, to withdraw the remarks in relation to him having to resign as from, well, of himself in terms of his party, but as um, chairman of, uh, of our market committee, because I think the people spoke here today and they're very supportive of, of Martin, as I am. He is my full 100%, as, as Albert has there uh, as vice chairman. And as I say, I just think it's something that, uh, you know, I don't think that it needs to be said here because Martin, as I said, is a very honourable person. And I would, I would um, suggest that Martin should hold on to the position that he's in. And as I said in the outset, I would like to see him, if it was possible at all, and Albert, if it was possible at all, to join the committee that's already been selected to go and see the government. Because we, um, the, all the other councillors, I think I speak on behalf of all the other councillors, I don't think of any descending voices. I think we're very happy with Martin as chairman of our mighty committee. And that's just basically all I want to say. Thank you. 
Men jag kan inte säga att de tränar på någon på att det är det ena. Jag kan inte säga att de har tänkt 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 Through the chair, uh, Jack, through the chair, uh, Martin Farron has, has, has requested me to withdraw something. I warned Councillor Martin McDermott on the telephone when I'm fighting a legal war, I don't take prisoners. And he has, he has the option, he has the option, he has the option to step down from Fianna Fáil and as a victim of Micah, he should do that. Because what he called, the, the bottom line here is, the bottom line is here, Jack, right? That that working group cannot deliver us justice, and I'm having nothing to do with them. They won't deliver us anything. They might deliver up one or two things, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope they do deliver us justice, so we don't have to go down the legal route. But I don't. I, I, that working group does not work for me. And not only that, Councillor McDermott, I told him, I says, when the war is over, we'll still be friends. And I'm making no assertion that he's not a decent person. But what I'm saying is. He's trying to protect his party at national level. And I've stand over everything I said to him on the telephone. I have good time for him. I think he's a nice fella. But you can't be nice when you fight the state. You've got to be nasty as they are. Right. That, that's an issue for Dell. We're not, we're not, everybody's had their say in it tonight. It's, it's over now. We can disagree on that. We're, we're going to move on. Uh, Councillor Tom Conaghan. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to make a comment or two there, and uh, maybe I'm within my rights, maybe I'm not, but the whole fact I would like to say now, I'm, I'm sitting here and, and, and listening to a lot that's going on. It's not was very good up this, but it just seems to be getting, like last week. Now, the, the, the one thing that I would like to say, I don't think anybody has to sit for five hours and listen to what we're listening to. Now, I, I would also go as far as to say that... Uh, I feel sorry for you as chairman to, to have to take what you got, although really you don't took it the last day. Now, in my opinion, if anybody has anything to say about anybody, it's not on the air or, or openly like this. Jim Brogan, in my opinion, and Mark McDermott, different words, have been taken under question all the time. Now, I think it's not a one bit fair for people that have so much to offer. And, and uh, I would go as far as to say that I would not be prepared to stand for all this and uh, carry on that's going on here now at the moment. And the other thing is, I would feel strongly that this, I have only been my second term, that this is the best council that ever has been. And let anybody not think that it's going to be pulled down by anybody else. Because I think, you know, we came here the day to discuss something about micro. And I think there was as much linen washed as 10 washing machines wouldn't clean it up. Thank you very much, Chairman. I think nobody deserves what's going on. Well, Chair, I can't help it. It's Tom Conaghan. I can't help it, Chair. If Tom Conaghan can't stand up and fight, I can show you how to fight. I can show you how to fight. Go and read the Morris Tribunal, what I've done to the state. I'll, I'll dry out all of the linen I have to, and you won't stop me, Councillor Conaghan. And, and you can take that. you can take that to the bank. You can take that to the bank that caused all the problems in this country. I'm going to wrap it up there, folks. We've put all our questions forward. We've got a comment from the executive to answer all those questions, make the questions public. I can go all night, Tom Conan. I can go all night. That's one thing I was good at. I was a brilliant athlete. I can go all night. I can go on a meeting all night. Frank, take a break. I've been over here only yourself, have you are. Uh, for, being, folks, I think it was a very worthwhile meeting. I think it was great to see the amount of people that have tuned in here. I think it was great the contributions that every member made here today. Uh, and United on this hugely important issue. It's very reiterated. But it's an important issue, an important meeting. It's important we all came together and we'll come back to do this again. So I want to thank everybody for their time. As Thomas said, it was five hours. People are very, very busy. It's a long and tiring process to do this, but it's massively important. And for all the people that were listening, they need to hear that we're standing up from this issue and we we'll continue to do it. Uh, one day, the, the, uh, the executive and the chairs of the SPCs, myself, uh, as the corporate policy group, are going to meet with the Raptors members of the county. This, of course, will be an issue we'll, we'll uh, discuss in detail with them, and they'll again be united on us with, with us on this issue. It's not going to go away, folks, we're going to keep working on it. So I just want to thank everybody uh, for the positive contributions that were made today. And I think at that, I can bring it to a close.
Thank you, Chair. Am I able to Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kahirla. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.